Let them see your true colors, Becca. No. no, no. <laughs> we save that for the one-liners. There you go, uh, which I'm sure will be a plenty. All right. And let me get this set up. Hello, Josh. Good to see Hi. you in. Uh, Josh, I understand. Hello, Manda. Um, I know uh, Amanda is going to be uh, in and out uh, tonight. She's uh, got some family stuff, and we're glad for her. Uh, we do let her have a night out of the cage every once in a while here at Blue Box. And um, not. no, actually, everything Amanda has done from the beginning um, has been incredibly supportive and volunteer beyond. Um, just, you know, I said everything I needed to say when we had the mods of Blue Box, but I mean, she has been absolutely um, indispensable to us here and we're so grateful for her uh, then tonight we also have uh, Josh Iculus on uh, with us and uh, he is you know I probably should have clarified I talked about the mods but I really meant the sort of the the discord level mods when I did that but we have other mods who help us mod our twitch chat and people who support the community in other ways and I definitely need to bring that up as well and I will um, but thank you everyone hang on here let me do this <clears throat> Uh, does it sound okay, Josh? No. When did you put a hat on? Josh. It's been on the whole time. You haven't seen it? All right, very good. And... It's my toke. Uh, how, is the background level uh, music okay for you players, and is it okay for you fans? Good for this player. I have my sound turned off, so... You don't hear it through Zoom? No, I don't hear it. She doesn't hear any of us, actually. She just has it muted. Do you guys hear it through Zoom? I hear it. I don't know where I'm hearing Okay, so, so it was too quiet then. See? You tell me it's okay, Rory, and then you can't hear it. Hey, it's not my fault. I have a mixer that can do that. <laughs> there you go. It's yeah, get good, Becca. Hello. Good to see you, Jeff. Good to see you, Joffrey. We got a Joffrey and a Jeff back to back there in the chat. Hello, Tracy. I'm glad it sounds good in the car. All right, let's go ahead and click over live, and we're going to uh, keep yeah. our What Happened Last Time brief and get right into the gameplay tonight. Everybody's been waiting to see what will happen, and uh, it is uh, the short night, uh, and plus with the absolute... The glorious five dragon transition. Hello, everyone. You are now both seen and heard on Blue Box. And thank you for joining us, uh, all the uh, Blue Box mad chatters. It'll be a fun tonight, night today. I was just about to say, uh, not only do we need to get to the gameplay uh, because the folks are waiting, but Vivi gave us an absolute tongue lashing uh, today about uh, her that work day. That wasn't a tongue lashing. <laughs> it, it, it was less of a anything. lashing and more of just a tongue. Uh, okay, Josh has started it off with the very first comment. <laughs> Josh is coming out firing. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Blue Box. <laughs> this is episode 38 and 95. So much. That means we will have 96, 97, 98, 99. We will have four more episodes after this one, and then it will be our 100th episode of Greyhawk Awakening. Yeah, hard to believe. We'll do something special. The Grey Greyhawk Awakening Great. box set glossography. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and we already have one entrant in that giveaway. Uh, Jerry, Adam JR, uh, was put in that. We'll probably do one other early entrant in the next couple of weeks, and then the rest will be entered uh, the night of the big stream. Uh, I want to say a quick thank you to the three folks on this Zoom uh, on, on our Twitch that have been there for every single one. Uh, Vivi, Josh, and Rory, thank you. 95 episodes. Think of all the time you've taken away from your children uh, to be doing this. Um, have you ever questioned what kind of parent? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, uh, so uh, tonight, uh, we'll save our sponsors for the break. And I know I said that last time and then got excited and we didn't do our sponsors at the break. So Amanda popped them in the chat and then absolutely remonstrated me viciously in my Discord uh, this week and, and, and told me that I must, if I say it, make sure I give the sponsors on the break. So you guys help me. I don't want Amanda to yell at me again. Uh, but I do want to get straight into the gaming. We'll do announcements and all that stuff later. Let's talk about what happened last time. Okay, here we go. I yeah. just literally just finished it. 
it up like <laughs> not like two seconds ago. Okay, previously on Greyhawk Awakening, the combat with the purple worm resumes. Anaho and Val quickly swapping weapons. Val with a crossbow and three poison bolts, yeah. and Anaho with the dagger returning. Val climbs up the rope to get a better vantage point. Uh, cue nice booty. Um, Rowan's <laughs> rage building as he aids Rizia up close. Razan is shooting bolts from a distance, ready to jump in at any moment. Rizia once again being held above ground. Um, Anaho rushes in to help her. Aims uh, for a previously opened area, jumping bravely into battle before being swallowed into the belly of the beast, literally. Um, the group rush to kill the worm um, before it digests Anaho. Val remembering the levitating effects of the white stone he pocketed a while back, uses it uh, to position himself directly above the worm before firing two bolts directly into the soft tissue's mouth. Uh, writhing in pain before it falls to the ground. Rasmus immediately moving to free Anaho. Rizzi is able to pull him free, covered in small cuts and burns. Uh, his body lay unconscious. Rasmus calls Rowan to, and the two work together to help Anaho while making sure that the coast is clear before jo joining the rest of the group. Anaho finds... Um, Blue gems inside the worm, and Val, a lover of shiny things, immediately draws him over and begins collecting some of the gems. No gem would ever get past Val's radar, as he finds another clear white stone six feet down in the ground from which the worm emerged. As Rasmus is tending to Naho's wounds, and uh, Rowan uh, and Rowan holds the, the rope for Val so he can scale down to retrieve the gem, Rizia disappears off on her own, making sure the coast is clear before putting her friends in danger again. She sees a stone slab uh, that seems to be calling to her, and she moves forward. Ghostly tendrils peeking out of the stone script. Who are you? What do you? Uh, what do you come? It calls out. All that come for gold die here. There is no place for you. Rizia proclaims that it's Snoran's gold belongs to her, and the group catches up with Rizia after some discuss discussion. The group jump into the crypt one after another. A glowing gate with a uh, port. Portcullis? 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 For them, Portcullis. Uh, a gleaming golden light emanating from it. Piles and piles of treasure. Rizzi's eyes locked on the treasure. Anaho, very, very wary, reaches out and grabs her hand to pull her back the best he can. The group um, keep an eye out for any dangers that may lurk. Rizzi opens a gate and creaking to reveal a vast treasure of coins, gold, gems, and weapons. Meanwhile, the rest of the group keep an eye out when Rowan spots something dark flittering in the shadows. Dark hands come from the shadows, grasping at Anaho and Rowan. Belfino shouts out to Rasmus, Time to shine, Prince of Darkness! Rasmus, uh, Rasmus's voice um, deepens to a growl as he smiles, and the darkness from his arts expands and flows over him, swirling in one eye. I am the son of darkness. The darkness expands. Um, for him, black flames ex expands from the and from him and blossoming out as it engulfs all foe around him. The shadows start to pull away as the door slams shut behind them. Uh, we last left off with Rizia standing in a room full of treasure where she's been searching for 400 years. Here's a voice urging her to make a choice. An axe floats up, stones and coins falling from it. A golden blade and a hand a handle shimmering as you see three places where it looks like gems could be placed her eyes darting between the axe and the treasure make your choice the voice echoes out as Rizia's hand reaches out for the axe she struggles to make a choice Ooh, which gold um, we shall see tonight um, with that let's do our player introductions and jump right into the game let's start with you tonight Valfino so Val is a lover of money and all things that shine and can bring him wealth. Um, he will kind of do whatever it takes for money. Take that as you please. Uh, <laughs> he will flirt his heart away. He will uh, sell your children. He'll do whatever is needed to get money. Um, but with that comes a confliction of he will also do whatever he has to for his friends. So we might see a little bit of that coming out tonight with Val. Ooh, very nice. Uh, let's go to you, Anaho. Yeah, so Anaho is a... Uh, he is a halfling slayer. Uh, some exciting stuff coming for him if we can ever survive this place. Uh, he is uh, from, or taken from, out of the Underdark and has grown a bit of a... A friendship, a bond with Rizia over the course of many people dying in the group, and even was eaten and partly digested by a small purple worm to save Rizia. To save Rizia, Rizia. Stop to rubbing save it in. Rizia. <laughs> He was I just. Get it, I get it. Sacrifice. <laughs> Sometimes sacrifices have to be made. <laughs> he was just 
you know, fully lacerated and partially digested. Um, yeah. One round, I didn't realize it. This is, I, I, I talk about this a lot, but see, I love the fact, personally, I know everyone has a different style. When I watch Jay, Lord Gazumba's in the chat tonight, um, Jay is the, like, absolute statistician. He tracks everything. He can give you every player's bonus, every player's armor class, every player's hit points. I, I know your armor classes. I know your perception roles, certain key roles. Um, but I don't track your hit points only because I know I would be influenced to fudge. Uh, and so... I always love it when I find out, like, I did, like, I had no idea. You, you're coughed out of the worm, and you made some reference to, like, what you look like, and you hadn't said anything when you got that last set of damage, and you were at one hit point. Um, ne negative three hit points. Oh, you were negative. Oh, that's right. You were at negative three hit points. Um, and that was. Wait a minute. I have deja vu. Didn't this happen to you before when we were pulling you out of that pit? And it, you were like, it, dead? It, 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 it did. It did. It's happened to him twice now where he comes out um, and he's hanging by a thread. All right. Let's go to you, Rasmus. No. I insist. Um, <laughs> hi, guys. I play Rasmus. He is a six level Inquisitor. Wow. I almost. Just absolutely lost it. This storm's really distracting. Um, uh, level six Inquisitor of that of the Sin Eater domain. He has or had a close friend that has since gone quiet, but is still there, just as recovering his strength. He's recently started to lean more into the Prince and Son of Darkness role, but for good whatever that may mean <laughs> um, and finish up last episode with him shooting these white and black flames from his body dispersing all of the shades and shadows around his, his friends so we'll see what happens whether Rizia lets us die very nice very nice um, all right, and hey, uh, Tim, good to see you in the chat as well. Um, we'll be running another Barbarian stream on the 19th, I believe it is, uh, coming up in a couple of Saturdays, and that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, last but not least, Rizia. Hello, my name is Evie. I play Rizia. She is a level seven uh, half orc barbarian who, may I add, actually broke her leg and suffered a lot of uh, minuses for a long time for this group, <laughs> and then had her arm dislocated and ripped out of socket for oh, this group. Yeah, that's true. And then also got bitten by a worm and like held up in the air so you know what i mean i took my i took my shots too <laughs> you've earned that gold i earned, I earned it <laughs> um i think rizzy is currently facing a very tough decision um mm -hmm. uh searching for a goal that she's been searching for for 400 years um and not really knowing what's going on with her friends because she is actually not aware of what happened. She has been so hyper-focused on this treasure. The door is closed. She has not heard her friends cry for for help, so she is not aware that her friends are in danger. Um, so it'll be very interesting what she decides. Exactly. And for those of you who may be confused, uh, she said uh, she's been searching for the treasure for 400 years. Rizia herself is only 38 years old. Uh, this was a promise that was given uh, to her and passed down through her family 400 years ago this promise occurred from the one she has referred to as Snorin and was passed down to her almost as a birthright for which she has sought relentlessly, doggedly, and diligently so you might have noticed when the strange monk meditating in the snow, Adoram uh, mentioned uh, this ability to give knowledge and then he mentioned uh, where this could be found, she was then unerringly pointed in this direction as we begin tonight's session, Rizia stands before a glowing pile of gold, uh, the largest any of you have ever seen. It glistens with light almost of its own accord. Mesmerizing, she sits there, hearing this voice, and a golden axe floats up eye level with her, and this choice is audibly given. As Rizia's hand is outstretched. Thoughts go through her mind. Uh, Rizia, share with the group some of what Rizia is thinking and feeling right now. Ooh, okay. I don't know how much. Okay, hang on one second. Let me look this up real quick. Take your time. Um... 
Okay. By the way, everyone in the chat, is audio uh, sound okay? Video look okay? All the techie stuff, solid? Um, as Rizia is standing um, in this room full of treasure, just completely overwhelmed uh, by the vast amount uh, and being able to see it for the very first time, something that she's only heard of um, as a young kid growing up, stories of this unknown treasure that seemed to have belonged to her. She thinks back and she hears her mom's voice telling her the story every single night that she goes to bed. Uh, and the words that she says is, but they will never find the gold because like Snoran said, it already belongs to you. And someday when you're big, you're going to go and claim that gold that's left there for you. As these moments of her childhood go through her mind, she also senses uh, floating through her subconscious the nature of such a promise. Why? What, what sort of motivation, what creature, who was this Snorin? How would he know the name of one not born for nearly 400 years? Why a promise of gold buried in an ancient temple? All of this floods her mind. Her hand, green in the light, golden light, trembles as she outstretches. Rizia, what do you do? And you don't have to make a, I mean, if you want to look around, no, I'm, you're, I'm, I'm not, I'm, yeah. She's, yeah, she's going to take uh, just a second to kind of look around and see what kind of treasure exactly this is. Like it, it took her a moment where she's just kind of coming in and she's just so overwhelmed and she's trying to absorb it all, uh, but she's unable to. So um, she breaks, uh, breaks it for a second, just to kind of really just take a second to pan around and look at the choice that she has to make. So um, as she looks around, it's not exactly what I have reflected here on the Tailspire screen. It is, in fact, mounds and mounds of gold coin. Uh, you do see the interspersing of uh, small gemstones. Um, it looks like there are larger pieces of metal, perhaps a blade here or there sticking out. But, but by and large, you would guess tens of thousands of pieces of gold lie on this floor. She stands there and just takes in the sheer amount of gold. Um, she's never seen anything like this in her entire life. And she hears another voice, not her mom's, but Anaho's, right before she went in. And he asked her if that was the choice he wanted to make. She turns and looks over her shoulder. As you turn and look over your shoulder, the gold glimmering casting shadows against the gate. You see your friends and it appears as though time is still. They all stand hands out in different motions. You see shadows that seem to be moving or seem to have moved but are now also still. Everyone looks frozen like in a, in a bas relief that sits on a wall. just means I have more time to think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's one oh, way no. to look at it, yeah. Yeah, she'll just... Can she inspect that axe just to see exactly... Like, she's not going to touch it, but she just wants to really get a good look at it. What is it? Sure. Um, as you step uh, forward, uh, that axe uh, floating in midair... It's of looks. It looks like it's of gold. You can't, you know, tell for certain. But it looks like both the blade and the handle all fashioned from gold. It's got a wickedly sharp, long blade on one end, and a slender but uh, solid-looking spike that extends out the other end. On the haft, between the two, at the top of the haft, there are three indentations um, that look. Uh, circular and look as though something could slide into each of those three indentations as it 
floats there, it kind of shimmers back and forth in the light. It itself is quite mesmerizing. Even from this vantage point, you can see um, it is extremely finely crafted. She will drop to her knees. Um, the coins kind of as she drops to her knees and she takes her hand and she actually puts her hand in the gold and grabs a good handful and kind of just like it fall, fall out of her hand. Exactly as you describe. The coins glisten in the light and then tinkle down among one another. Some roll and scatter onto the stone floor. Still utter silence behind you. She'll look out the, <clears throat> the gate again just to see to make sure that everybody's still kind of frozen in time. You look back out and you see it indeed uh, your comrades all just standing there unmoving. Isn't it great how Tailspire just captures that lack of movement? <laughs> uncanny. <laughs> Sorry. Absolutely uncanny. <laughs> do I pick? This gold is mine. It belongs to me. Mm -hmm. She turns and looks out the gate again. Okay. You look out the gate and you see your friends. Um, you see Anaho. Um, in the mo this is the in the moments before Josh did what Josh did, you know, before Rasmus um, called out his son of darkness. What was Anaho doing in those moments just before that happened? Describe to, uh, describe to Rizia what she sees. Yeah, you would have seen, I guess, because I'm, I'm frozen in the stance I'm in, I would have been as if I was walking in. You know, I had mm -hmm. touched your hand, <clears throat> touched your hand and, and gave a word of caution as you then continued to walk in and seconds later uh, being uh, halted. So you'd see me almost not necessarily with a hand reaching out to you, but in a forward stride, kind of lower than reaching out um, in a forward stride and, and looking at you because I'm following you. So looking, you know, at you, following you in just kind of that forward stride of emotion, but stuck. Uh, you see Rowan stands to one side with a strangely absent look on her face. Um, what do they see with Valfino? You're muted. <laughs> the joys of remote sure. gaming. There we go. It was an unmuting. Sorry, guys. Um, so Val is trying to figure out what's going on around him. Like he's frozen in this like curious pose. Like he sees these shadows coming. He was able to see that. He lit his torch, so he sees them coming at him. So he has this concerned look on his face. He's stuck in this picture of worry and just fear. All right. And then Rasmus, uh, remind us in those moments right before you cast the spell and banish the darkness, what were you doing? Um, Rasmus was standing in the hallway that led or that little entry space okay. that led into the room with his shield up. Mm-hmm. And then as he saw the shadows surrounding everyone, which I think this is prior to that point, so right. he would literally just be standing in that indentation with his shield up and his hand on his sword. All of this you see, Rizia, as you look back out at your friends. Uh, still looking over her shoulder, um, she's still on, the, on her knees on the ground, uh, hands kind of just full of coins. She turns and looks at everybody, specifically Anaho. She looks at him, his face, the burns that are on his skin and the cuts, the small cuts that he just uh, received from being swallowed by the worm. 
and his choice. And she kind of smirks, just his choice to just always, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's needs and wants. And she looks at Rasmus and she has almost like a flashback to him writhing in pain on the ground as his arm was severed off. Mm. Mm. And some flashbacks of just her keeping an eye and looking, looking, constantly looking at his neck to see where the tendrils were coming from. And flashing back to Rasmus's plea to rest when she was not of sound mind and just wanted to just go. As she turns to face the gold again, she just takes the gold that's in her hand and she tosses it to the side and she reaches out and she'll grab the ax as she turns oh, around. Whoa! I really didn't think that's what you were gonna do. I really didn't. Um... <sighs> There's no way. If they're frozen and they're looking at it, she's not holding them, standing the way that he's <laughs> With his hand outstretched. Yay. Rizia. When you touch the axe, the axe, the gold, everything disappears, leaving you in an empty... No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Girl! <laughs> John, you should have. Yeah, I know. So I, I couldn't even keep... Uh, my official resignation. <laughs> she told me what kind of day she had already. Oh I was not going to do that. She would have literally... So I, would have like, touches oh. the axe, the floor falls. Yeah, those like, the <laughs> bikes. Everybody dies. Um, oh. All right, uh, as you reach out, out of the grave. Uh, you touch the axe and you feel the vibration of the floor. And indeed, the gold vanishes. Everything goes quiet. And suddenly you hear the shouts of your friends uh, from behind you. Um, before you can even register the shouts of your friends, the axe, it feels while you look at something that's gold, it feels so light in your hands. Um, in the split second before you hear the shouts of your friends, you note the balance of it in your hands and also a slight warmth. And you feel uh, almost a sense of emotion coming from the haft uh, of perhaps surprise. And then you hear the shouts of your friends. As you turn, uh, you rush to the gate the gate is closed. You rattle your hands against it, and you see uh, suddenly all of your comrades are surrounded uh, by this uh, cadre of horrible looking creatures of darkness as they move as though to rip apart all of your comrades. You see, um, you see Rasmus pull out uh, his staff, um, make his cry. He says something in a, in a tongue that's difficult for you to hear. Everything sounds obscured through these gates. And then suddenly, everything vanishes around and the rest of your party stands staring bewildered. The gate opens. All is quiet. Are we able to move again? Are we? Able yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. You never felt frozen. I just saw you guys frozen. Yeah, she. Got that's it. what she saw. You never felt that. So for us, it was just nothing happened. It was just seamless in time. For uh huh. Us. Well, then I'm going to keep walking forward towards Rizia because that's what I was doing. Yeah, you step forward. You see her standing at the gate. The gate falls open, and you note that that pile of treasure is gone. Uh, but Rizia holds in her hands um, a golden axe. Do you have some way of carrying all that? Uh, where'd you put all the gold? It's gone. Oh, well, I, I see that it's yeah. not there. <laughs> <laughs> you hear a muffled. It's gone. As Rasmus is currently face down on the ground, having cast a spell out, then dropped to his knees and just fallen face down, just collapsed from the sheer exertion. As she hears that, she'll actually just walk past. And now you can see 
that her demeanor is very stoic. She kind of just walks past you. Um, and then, Rasmus, you'll feel at the back, like, at the back of your clothing, somebody just pull you straight up. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Let's go. Val is now all of a sudden heartbroken. He's looking around like, what, 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 what do you mean it's gone? Where did it go? <laughs> How heartbroken is Val? Like on a scale of one to 10. <laughs> like, Val's like, has totally forgotten about the spooky guys, like trying to get him. His hands is, are in his hair. Like there was so much gold. <laughs> Where did all the gold go? Where is he at? Where, what, what's going on? <laughs> you, you see Rizia drop uh, Rasmus once he's kind of on his feet and she'll come over to you and just put her arm around you kind of like leading out to like whatever direction looks like the way out and she's like it's it's gone Val starts to cry a little bit he's like he gets up <laughs> <laughs> like, oh and then like you feel, you feel like a pat on the back it's like yeah me too <laughs> I know how you feel Rowan looks over at you what did you do with it lass I didn't do anything I made a choice she looks over at the axe that you're holding in your hands. For that? All that yeah. gold for that? For this and for you guys. Uh, Rowan quirks her head like she's processing this. Never mind. Rizzi says you made a choice. That's all. Let us go, like she said. That is all I need. All right, then. So uh, how do we get out of here, Rizia? This is your place. We came down. I don't know what to do now. I honestly have no idea. Uh, uh, I don't know. Let me look. Rasmus would have been, once he was set upright, he would have sat on the steps and then would have started looking around the room and right about this time she would hopefully be at the top of those steps kind of looking around the rest of the room to see what else there is sure so um as you do that uh you kind of walk up the stone steps almost like a ziggurat um mm -hmm. and from the top you look around and you can actually see it looks like there is another gate um to your right, uh, the opposite way from when you came in. Um, there seems to be a gate up here on the right side, if you want to go around that way. Very well. Sounds good. Anaho will stick close to Rizia, but starting to walk away as in like, I'm going, so come but he's heading that way. Like, just body language, he's... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ricky will follow. Val is slightly distracted, looking over his shoulder, <laughs> um, <laughs> like, trying to still see if he can see any glint of shimmery goodness back there. Val, but, it's all uh, gone. He's sticking real close to Rizzi's <laughs> side because he's liking being so close up next to him. <laughs> I'll console okay. you. Let's go. It's Val, there's no so point. Happy it's... to be all snuggled up with Rizia, so there's no point. It's all gone. Looks up at her with these big, big, big eyes. Just <laughs> okay. And she'll actually take her like green thumb and like you feel her just wipe wipe one of your tears away. <laughs> His heart starts. To <laughs> John, can I tell how old the architecture here is? Uh, let's see. Let's make a knowledge check, and we'll use um, for you. Let's use. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? What'd you say? I'm looking oh. for my phone. By the way, while he's looking for that, um, okay. let me t let me talk about our giveaway quickly because I should have mentioned that earlier uh, tonight. We're giving away uh, one of my favorite uh, books, Lightning Source Reprints, Treasures of Greyhawk. Um, this is, I've given a couple of these away. These things are glorious from uh, 
uh, Canadian Ancient Gamer, Patrick, he sends these. He sent me something super cool this week I'll show you here in the next couple of days. Uh, but this is 100 pages of content uh, designed to take characters from levels 4 to 18. Um, this is a great book. Um, you want this book. That'll be one of our giveaways tonight. Uh, all right. Uh, so let's do Knowledge uh, Dungeoneering. Okay. And then on this, could I also tell what sort of... Um, I guess it could be an either or, but could I tell what sort of culture this architecture came from? Okay, and so uh, then you'll also do a separate knowledge history. Okay, okay. make two rolls. Dungeoneering, or um, what was it? Knowledge. Yeah, so knowledge dungeoneering for the first roll, and okay. then knowledge history Ooh. for the second roll. Knowledge dungeoneering. That's a twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay, go ahead. Knowledge history is a fifteen. Okay. Um, so the, the answer you get from the first sort of helps explain the second. As you look around studying the stone, um, you can see that some of the uh, more current elements of it, the statues which adorn the ziggurat um, above, uh, look like they are of newer construction than some of the older elements of it. Uh, you would guess those statues themselves are a thousand years old. Um, telling you that the rest of this structure is much, much older. As a result, you have no idea what culture uh, this would have come from. Okay. And then once everyone's out of the chamber, I'll just follow behind. All right. Knowledge Mouseketeering. Pretty good blood wild, actually. <laughs> as, um, as you walk forward, uh, Rizia, that warmth... Um, I'm assuming you're still holding the axe, or have you, okay, and that warmth that you feel, um, it trembles a bit, and you hear a voice in your head. Oh my, oh, oh it's been such a long time. Uh, th thank you, I, I uh, who are you? Uh, Val, you'll see like with her, her arm was still around you, like trying to help guide you out. All of a sudden, she drops that arm, and she's like looking at the axe. I'm Rizia. Uh, if I don't mistake, I, I feel uh, you've got orc in your blood. I can feel it in your hands. How interesting. Rasmus. <gasps> Oh, I've been here a long time. I'm feeling a bit tired. Um, but I should say thank you. I, a dreadful <laughs> place to be left for hundreds of years. Do you sleep? Uh, well, what else would one do laying in a pile of your lessers for that long? Rasmus! <laughs> Rasmus is, <laughs> Rasmus is slowing, so I'm. We're out of the room. Yes. Correct? So, so okay. you walk over to the portcullis. Um, you see a lever right next to it. You pull it. It opens up, and reveals a hallway um, beyond. And you still have the light uh, with you. You can see kind of clearly down the hallway, and it just goes down the path. Uh, rock walls on either side. Okay. As as we're walking down this hallway and Rasmus just hears his name called, he's just left hand on the wall, kind of walking with that unsteady manner that he's had these past few days. And he's just like, yes, oh, great grand leader. What is it that you need? And you see her, like, take the axe and, like, try to move it as far away <laughs> as she can. And she, like, leans no. in. No, 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 no. No, 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 we just got that. <laughs> we did a lot for that. You are not getting shut rid up, of it now. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And she, like, leans forward to, like, whisper in your ear. Is it normal for, like, things to talk to you? Like, things to talk to you? Uh, like, did you call me a thing? I, I, oh, what's your name? Sorry, I didn't... Um, oh, that. now I, she deigns to ask wow, my name. Wow. How kind of Rizia, her. When you when you talk to it, are you talking out loud to it? 100%. <laughs> How long was that? Uh, uh, my name, yes. Uh, I, well, in your tongue, I would be called Halcyon. Uh, Hal Halcyon, you know, as in uh, days which were once better, or was it days that will be better? I can't recall. Was it 
days which are gone or days which have not yet come. Well, one of them you, will be Halcyon. Do you hear this or is it just me? Is it is can you hear this too? You just get a <laughs> uh... <laughs> Nobody, nobody and not anybody. Val says himself. I'll, even if she's crazy, I still love her. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, <laughs> um, no, Rezia, we do. I, I do not hear it. As you will look around. I understand this may have been uh, stressful for you, Rezia, but no, uh, I no, do no, believe no. me. I have been through many trying things. You should not be <laughs> hearing voices. I'm definitely hearing voices. Will. Um, you know, like, playfully, but I'll take a couple steps back away from you. Okay. Uh, Anaha, where are still. you going? Just... <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, Listen, I, the, Halcyon, Halcyon, Halcyon is his name. Oh, Halcyon, that's, Halcyon, Halcyon, Halcyon. So oh, that's pleasant. No, 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 just so it's... Uh, Halcyon, H-E-L, or H-O-S, or H-A-U-S? H-A-L, C... Why, Owen? She kind of like questions <laughs> the accent. As Joshua asks this more than anyone else. Yeah. When out. did your people learn to spell that way? How, how, Steen? Okay. I love uh, how she just kind of like looks at it while she's talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, Rizia, can your voices hear us also? Finally, the short, bloody, and somewhat daft looking one asks a good question. Um, of course I can hear them. I am a sentient being. Um, I have ears to hear and, well, at least as long as you hold me, I have eyes to see. Um, but I am tired and this prattling discussion is uh, well, not really stimulating even after 400 years laying there. Um, okay, <laughs> He said... Wow. He said... Did you just <laughs> shush me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have lots of time to talk. Um, okay. Listen, Anaho, he said, yes. I, yes, he can hear you. He said, good, great question. Oh, oh <laughs> that, I very much like this Halcyon. That is a good weapon you got there. Yeah, De I don't know. Detect what magic. <laughs> no, there's no magic. <laughs> no. <laughs> he Go ahead, sorry. He's a sentient, sentient being. Hmm. You, so you do you detect magic? Uh, yes, yes. You're, sir? All right, you detect magic as you cast it. Um, you kind of reach out and with your, um, sort of, you know, in, innate, uh, arcane sense, uh, you feel some of a, and you're, you're rocked back. You feel mm -hmm. powerful magic emanating from this. And in fact, as you do this, um, your eyes become acute and you see, in addition to what I described to Rizia, you see an inscription along the okay. blade itself. Can I read the inscription? Um, as you look Please. at it... Please! No, this isn't a... Ah! It looks like three lines, but in a language you don't recognize. Uh, okay, let's go, I guess. Um, is this a friend of yours, Rizia? Does he know the way out? Do you know the way out? Um, well, it has been quite a long time. Um, they carried me down some stone steps and um, uh, they, they kind of dandied me about like I was just a common blade, uh, threw me in here. Um, I think uh, we came from up. Well, that's very handy. Um, oh, you're welcome. Wait, you can see through my eyes? Is that what's happening here? Ah, yes. Uh, acute they are. What if I close my eyes? Oh, don't do see? that. I don't like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> they called you acute. <laughs> Val comes up and just starts poking it, like... Hey, Val? Val? I don't think you should don't. do that. Well, I don't think it's the weapon. It's, you know, uh, some people say the answer's within, so if we ask Rizzi a question, maybe she'll, uh... Uh... Uh, Find the answer. It's like Rasmus is leaning against the wall, his eyes closed and taking deep breaths. I would not recommend touching the X. 
Val then starts blatantly just talking to this camera. Or axe. axe. <laughs> you are talking to a camera, yes. Uh, just, well, besides seeing and hearing, what can you do? Um, oh. Are you magic? Is, is the greedy one. I saw the way she was looking over her shoulder. He uh, he was looking over his shoulder. Um, he is very magical. Um, it, 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 asking for a parlor trick. Uh, it, it, uh, oh, I, uh, I, I think I'm going to take a nap for a while, but um, your name, uh, what did you say it was? Rizia. Rizia. Well, thank you. And now that the bonding has happened, um, I hope you're good at swinging me. Uh, Bondage and swinging. <laughs> they get oh, both. <laughs> oh, and um, uh, one last thing. Um, Kill that guy. <laughs> you see those uh, little um, notches on my handle? Uh, yeah. What about them? It would be lovely if you could find the proper stones to fill them. Uh, both <laughs> for you and for me. Uh, um, I'm going to take a nap now. <laughs> Can you ask? Uh, can you ask the prating one to be quiet? Um, do you not hear if I'm not holding you? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll just sheath um, the great axe, but she'll hold hers. Okay. Uh, but she'll she'll sheath them since he's sleeping. I don't really know. He sounds kind of like a. Um, and then she realizes that she kind of stops what she's saying because she <laughs> realized that he can probably hear her, so she's not going to say anything more. Uh, yeah, let's go. All right, before we go any further, I'm going to ask uh, Rasmus to make oh, a... Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. It's the solution save. I'm going to have you make a wisdom check. Uh, at a minus... Below the well. Um, yeah, but um, at a minus two. So what? what, are, what is your wisdom? Uh, 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 16. All right, so you need to roll a 14 or lower. Oh, so it's a plus two to the roll, effectively? Yeah, you could do it that way as well. Okay, yeah, keep okay. it 16, add right. two to the roll, or detract, yeah, but yeah, so it's, in other words, it's a, a it's two uh, levels more difficult. Yep. There okay. I rolled a 12. Um, it occurs to you as she's uh, sliding the axe back, while you can't read the language, mm -hmm. the script looks very familiar to you. You've seen it recently. Was it on the coffin? That's where you saw it. Mother trucker. It seems very similar to the same writing. Mm -hmm. Like same exact writing or same type of writing? Uh, I mean, you saw it briefly and you know, it was squiggles to you when you first saw it until it resolved in the light. But um, yeah, you think similar. Okay. Good to know. Okay. All right. You guys head out? Yep, I'll take a point and keep a, sh keep a short lead on everyone. 20 All right. feet or so and watch for traps. And you make your way uh, through the passage and um, as it uh, as you go down again, no need to pay attention right now to the tool or this is all uh, theater of mind. As you go down the passageway, uh, you can see the stone gets rougher and rougher, left less finished and eventually moves into what looks like was a naturally occurring uh, cavernous structure. And uh, as you move forward, you can see um, a bit of light outside um, at the end of the tunnel and you can hear the sound of the wind. Um, the, the entire time that they're kind of walking out, Val has kind of detached himself from Rizia. He's keeping an eye out, trying to see if he can find any more of those big, uh, he found that big white stone or big gem and he's trying to keep an eye out for anything. Um, does he see anything? Oh, you mean along the walls, looking for any sort of, yeah, okay. Um, no. Uh, all you see are standard sort of uh, granite, stone, and rock uh, that make up this mountainous structure.
But Naho will walk all the way to the end. The if there if there is an opening mm -hmm. large enough where the light is, he'll he'll walk all the way there. Um, you walk just to the edge, and as when you get close to uh, the edge of this cave, the wind you know picks up. Um, mm -hmm. It's quite loud here, whipping through with chill, and you have a, a brief sense of vertigo as you realize it opens up into a path that's no more than five feet wide and then drops off to a sheer cliff. Well, you'll see Anaho take a very quick step back, uh, being in front of everyone. Uh, I just take a quick, quick step back and, well, uh, it looks like perhaps we have a, 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 I don't know, but I don't like what I see. And, um, Anyone got any rope? And we might want some rope. I want some rope. Uh, my rope is still tied back uh, in place. Yeah, we've kind of been burning through a lot of our rope reserves. Val still has rope. Okay, Val. Um, I would, could I please uh, see an end of that rope? Lee? And you see just this somewhat controlled panic coming over. Anaho. I'm not sure if anyone else has seen outside yet or not, but uh, he's not liking what he saw. Yeah, I mean... Remembering it, the ice climbing and water that he uh, took a swim in. Right. Is there water at the bottom? Can we see if there's water at the bottom? Or is oh, so you're, look, you're, with... you're looking... Oh, you're asking him or you're looking? I'm asking you. I'm hmm. looking. Yeah, I'm looking. Did you get close enough to look over, Anaho? Yeah. Oh. I didn't. I just. You said it's a five foot wide path. Yeah. And, you uh, saw the really five foot hard. wide path in the drop. You didn't. You didn't tell me you got close to the that's, edge to look over. That's all. I, that is all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> and then he noped out of there. <laughs> He's like, nope, 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 nope. Uh, yeah, Rizia. Then we'll uh, just take a peek over. All right, Rizia, you step onto the path. As soon as you do, uh, the power of the wind, it's, it's even stronger than it seemed from inside the mouth of the cave. Uh, your first thought is it's probably good that Anaho, with his slight form and lightweight, didn't step out there first by himself. Um, and you take a peek over, and you see, as I said, sheer drop off. Looks like it goes hundreds of feet down and disappears into clouds that hang below. You are high up, and this is a sheer face that drops deep down below the Raker Mountains. Um, she'll kind of look to her left and right just to see if there's anything else. Like, um, just yeah, you see like the path extends, and then like a drop. Or? Yeah, no, no, it's a sheer. So, so imagine you're uh, you're on the side of a mountain that's that's sheer, and the path, narrow path, goes off in both directions. You look to your right, you look to your left, and you see this narrow five foot snow covered path. Well, um, as she turns over to uh, turns over to like an now, I don't think Val has enough rope for us to go down. No, all we need is enough to tie it to me, and I don't care, tie it to you or someone else. I, we, that's, that's all we need. That wind is really strong. I think you should definitely stay in between all of us. Yeah, I don't disagree. Not disagreeing, just don't make me climb, please. I can't <laughs> climb. No, you can't climb. I'll carry you. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Rose, but I still want the rope, even if you carry me. That's fine. We can tie each other. We can, <laughs> we can tie uh, all of us together. So at least uh, we're together. Um, Val. Yep. <laughs> She'll come over and grab the rope from you. In all honesty, I don't know, Rizia, that 50 feet is enough to tie us all together, but there is enough to tie around my tiny little waist. <laughs> I mean, full just, on self preservation has kicked in. For an hour. I think we can. So she'll find the center of the rope and then she'll actually tie it, like physically tie it around his uh, one wrist, like the one that's going to be on the outside. And then everybody else can just hang on to it and just wrap it around your hand, I think would be best. Oh, that, that way we can all interesting idea. We can all hang on to it without having to tie ourselves around the waist because I don't think there's enough rope for that. That Rasmus. works as long as you guys don't fall off opposite sides and leave me in the center. Oh, let's hope that doesn't happen. Rasmus, are you okay? Uh, yes. Uh, what is happening? 
And you notice that she kind of just stops and she's just looking looking over you again like she normally does, just checking to see the tendrils on your neck, on your arm, what does it look like? Uh, nowhere. Uh, you don't see the tendrils, he just seems tired. Do you want to rest before we go? No, no, I think we should get out of here. Um, also, I was waiting for a good break. John, mm-hmm. the light from within the temple, was that just regular moonlight or is that a specific type of light? No, so you might, yeah, thank you for asking, Josh. It's easy to like, so no, that was when she, when you pulled back the, uh, the top of that sepulcher, there was a light glowing within that sepulcher that shined up on the inscription and resolved it for you. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. I just need to make this note. Uh, no worries. Uh, um, I I am uh, just feeling a little tired. But do you recognize where we are, Rizia? You know this area better than we do. Um, as she kind of looks out and inspects again the area. Does she know the area? Uh, go ahead and roll knowledge geography. Because he is nowhere near that ledge. He's leaning against... How, how'd you do on in geography in school, Vivi? Uh, Vivi, great. Rizia, <laughs> not great. No, Vivi, not great. Uh, nope. Rizia also... I don't know. Hang on. Let's see how, how well she rolled. Um, I rolled a six. So also not great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we share that in common, you know. <laughs> lots of snow. Um, all you can tell uh, is, you know, obviously you you already knew you were somewhere uh, high in the rakers. You 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 gather you must be getting toward the peak um, of the the highest points of the rakers, and you are definitely as you look out, you're looking out to. Um, the west and you can see off in the distance it looks like a blue shimmer on the horizon you're you're probably looking out over your own homeland although you can't tell exactly where you're at you know you came from if you're looking at the map here you came from Marner uh, right now this is kind of where you grew up Uh, so you would guess you're somewhere if you can see my, my somewhere here in the Rakers and looking off to the east and you're at the highest peaks, so you're literally looking over the rest of the mountains uh, as they slope down and then head to the coast. Okay, so, uh, OC, where are we supposed to be going again after this whole treasure thing? Where are we supposed to be going? Down to... Up? I don't know. You guys tell me if you remember. I, th- I think northwest from here. Uh, like a half mile from where we went on the path. John, be nice yeah. to me. Yeah, because we're con- we're continuing on the path because Adoram was... said that it was literally like just a step. It, off yeah, you. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah I, I believe what I had mentioned to you was you know from where you you split off where the the strange tree mm-hmm. was. Yeah. You go back to that point. You had two miles further to the north, and you would find uh, the uh, the small citadel or small outpost of Last Chance. <clears throat> okay. Um, as she kind of looks around, Erasmus, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't really know, but I think there, um, I think there, you can see there, you see it? He's all, he's like... (laughs) 10, 15 feet from the <laughs> opening, he's leaning against the wall. Like, looks over. Lobs like, his head over. Yeah, yeah. like uh, uh, Princess Bride style, just lobs <laughs> his head over. Okay. Oh, yes, I can see brilliantly. Uh, yes, we're right next to the Denny's parking lot, of course. Okay, uh, never mind. All right, one anachronism, you're done. <laughs> um, he, the only reason I ask is. Uh, your blade, it has something on it that can only be revealed via, via, via the lights of the sepulchre. Uh, the, the, the coffin inside of the temple. You want to go back in there? I think it would be best. It wasn't hard getting in now that we know the entrance. I don't know if I know my way around back to the front entrance. 
but That's we can what try. I was worried about. Hey, Psst. hey, you. Uh, <laughs> like, <pulls> not you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Okay. You, you, so you pull, uh, you pull Halcyon off your shoulder. Um, <laughs> I'm Rizia, and while I am certainly grateful, do you know what a nap means? Um, after 400 years. Uh, yes, Halcyon, you've been sleeping for 400 years. Are you Time familiar with lethargy? Look, look, and she holds like the axe like this, and she's like, look, as she like looks out at like the thing. I'm like, look, when was the last time you saw outside? Now is not the time for a nap. Uh, it's bright out here. Um, it is bright. Uh, but certainly uh, beautiful. Um, but don't drop me. I won't drop you. Do you yes. know how to get around to the entrance again? Uh, I, I believe I told you earlier, uh, up. Um, it seems you've already found a way out. Why would you want to go back anyway? Uh, something about the inscription. Uh, what What inscription? This one, as she kind of points uh, at the inscription. Oh, mine! Yes. What of it? What does it say? Oh, well, certainly I can tell you that. <laughs> 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 what is he saying? Uh, um, he says, um, it says, um, where one gives life. Uh-oh. That's different. It's different. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> where one gives life, twice brings bright, thrice flight. Hmm. Can you fly? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, let me. I, I I had a wrong word there. So, so he says, where one gives life, Twain Twice. brings might. I said Twain brings might, uh, and threefold flight. Twain brings might. Might. Okay. Yeah, might. M M I G T. Okay, thrice. And then and, and th- uh, threefold flight. Threefold or thrice. Threefold you said flight. Thrice the uh, yeah, I know. I, I, I mean, it's he, the same. He's lying to all of us. It's the, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same. No, I can't read my own writing. Um, yeah, so okay. where one gives life, twain brings might, threefold flight. Do you rep- repeat that back to us? No. That's enough time. No, no, no. Are you I mean, serious? Oh, did, yeah, Rizia. Did, Rizia, did, Rizia, Rizia. Oh, okay. <laughs> John, get out of here. Uh, Rizia also, like, very the same way that John just delivered it. <laughs> she's like, she's like, where one gives life, life was, twice brings might, right? No. Was was the second one twain or twice or two? <laughs> twain. Twain. This twain. could be very important. Twain. Where one gives life, twain brings might, threefold Light. I'm going to assume it has to do with the stones, but sometimes it is not that straightforward. Mm. Uh, Val will come over to Rizia and like pull out, pull his rucksack to the side and have dig around in there for a sec and pull out a couple of the stones. It's like the big diamond he found and a couple of the little stones he got from the belly of the, uh, from the worm and kind of just hand them to her like Will these help? I have no idea. You uh, can <laughs> certainly try. Um, as you as you pull them out, um, w- w- so you have the sapphires, uh, you have the clear white stone. Which 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 are you putting in? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna ask Kelsey. Do any of these fit? <laughs> <laughs> so you, many you here? Are you flirting with me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can see like that kind of look that she has. I mean, I mean, you are, you know, look at you. There, he's, tra- no. he's tra- that's pretty sharp. There, the, the, the white one. That's one of them. Oh. Uh, that, uh, that's a life stone. Where, where did you find that? Uh, refers to Val. <laughs> okay. Was not- the greedy one. I should have known. Um. Wait, did you I, find, I didn't where did hear you him find, ask this. You, don't, you don't hear it. You can't hear yeah. him at all. Yeah. 
Uh, Val, where did you find the white one? He said this is this is a life stone. Um, I went down into the hole where the worm came out of. Uh, when you started going into the tunnel, I made everyone stop so that way I can go and get some get some more stones. That's the that's the one I had when they they brought me here. The other two had been prized away and taken. He said this is the one that he had when they brought him here, and the other two have been taken somewhere. Uh, well, well, I can be honest with you, I wasn't actually planning on any of these working, and he's just like, <laughs> he's like still holding on to <laughs> I, I mean, it's up to you, Val. Uh, you know, and she kind of holds her hands up, like she's not going to take it from you. You see what Pat Draws has started? You know, he, he began with one brings lice, and now Josh has carried it to so one brings lice, two brings might, and three brings flies. <laughs> this is a horrible axe. You know, translation it's, can be it's a. It's axe of the plague. <laughs> Don't do it, Val. Yes, I do admit to poor so penmanship. Like, seriously, like in his head, like you can hear him muttering to himself. About <laughs> how much money that is. Val, you don't have to make a decision now. You can keep it. She, she's my friend, but we might need help. This is help, but this could go for so much money. So much money. What am I supposed to do? What is she doing? She's, she's deciding. Shh. And then she like put her. She'll she's the. She gave up all the gold. What do you mean she's deciding? She's all of what twelve years old. She can't decide. That's mine. I think she. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Finders Keepers? Uh, uh, a puerile notion. Val will just like look up at Rizia and. <laughs> Rizzy, like, you can tell Rizzy is just kind of like talking to this like axe. <laughs> axe of nagging. Yeah, honestly, badgering. Axe of badgering. And, and it does like, it, uh, hopefully this is being conveyed. It's It sounds like you're talking to uh, a slightly addled old man. Uh, yep, 100%. Okay. All right, good. All right. <laughs> you're talking to John. Yeah. Oh, the sudden gust of wind. Rasmus is carried away. <laughs> <laughs> Val gets distracted by how cute Rizzy is, just like muttering to herself. Okay. Like, Go ahead. We can work out an IOU system later. And he like hands it out to. <laughs> you feel like Rizia's head actually like grazes the back of your hand before she grabs it. Thank you. Um, but you know, don't feel obligated. I know it's hard to make a decision right now. If you ever get rid of the axe, I want the stone back. Oh, hundred percent. It's yours. If you ever get rid of the stone, I want the axe. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, okay. okay. So, do I? As you as you hold, you feel the axe trembling. In your hand. Now you want to be awake. Yes. Um, oh, I'm quite alert now. Yes. Um, uh, forgive my early somnolence. Um, uh, things have gotten interesting. Uh, go on. Do it. Do it. Be quick about it. What a wonderful friendship I feel like this is blossoming <laughs> in into. <laughs> what? <laughs> Put it in him. It's a little cold, so make sure your hands are warm. Fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he right, Pat Draws? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Pat, we need some fan art of this. Wait a minute. As she's about to, like, place it in there, what exactly will happen if I put the stone in here? Oh, good <laughs> things. Very Oops. good things. For Just, you or for me? Oh, for well, when the bonding happened, those yeah, became fine. one and the same. You, you understand? You can't be rid of me until you're dead, and I am yours bound to service until such thing happens. I, I outlive all mortals, that's the way of things, but um, I am your good, and your good is mine. Uh, no, 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 please, be quick about it. <laughs> well, if you can't make up your mind, I'll take it back. And she just... <laughs> 
No, no, that would... Don't be hasty. Um, I, I didn't mean to call her the prattling greedy one earlier. Um, I think just a, a proper sense of value is what that one carries. And um, the value and clearly... If it wasn't if it wasn't for his greediness, he wouldn't have had this stone. Val kind of pops up as just, I'm not greedy. I know you're not greedy. Don't worry, I got you. <laughs> as she like, as she like, turns to look at you and like, she'll give you a wink. Like she's like, I know you're not greedy. That's what I'm trying to fight for. That's what I'm trying to tell him. Val um, slightly blushes, just kind of. Sits there. <laughs> well, um, then, uh, be quick so about listen, it. Listen. So if you're bonded with me, these are my friends. So we're not gonna do that. Uh, d- uh, what? You know, be nice. Uh, as she like puts the stone in. Uh, he's he, like, he pauses when you say be nice as though trying to understand what you're saying. Um, when you slide the gem in, uh, there's a subtle click and you hear a, oh, and there is an aura that goes about the ax. Uh, I want to share that. It glows. Shakes in your hands. You see a gleam along the blade, and then that one white stone just pulses with a soft glow. That's much better now, isn't it? Do I feel a difference? Mm, uh, you feel, like, joy, your pleasure along the axe. I'm not going to say the word, Josh, along the axe handle. <laughs> along the what? John? The axe handle. I'm having oh, trouble um, envisioning it, John. Could you, <laughs> yeah, could you give a bit more detail? <laughs> in a different sentence? What color is it? <laughs> I, I said it's Rephrase golden. Okay, golden. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, All right. so just a heads up, everyone. I'm back in the cave a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done been trying to start a fire because it's cold. It's so freaking cold. So okay, let's... that's where I am whenever you turn around with this nonsense. Okay, let's go. This is Joshua commentating. So oh, yeah. this is probably right there alongside <laughs> with you. Like, come on. Come so, on. so are you are you are you staying? Uh, are you going out? Or are you going back in the tunnel? We're going up. Up and out. Okay, there is no up here. No, I mean, let me, let me, be, let me be clear one more time. There's a path which goes to your right and to your left along the cliff's edge. So apparently I'm utterly failing at my theater of mind here. No, no, no. Uh, left would be north, correct? Um, yes, as you're, oh. as you're looking west, left, uh, left would be north. Okay, then left. All right. So you step out on the ledge, and uh, your, the rope is tied to an ajo, and that's tied to who? No, we're all just wrapping our hands like around the rope and holding it. Okay, everyone's just no one's holding the rope. Died except for Anaho because he's. We don't want him to blow away. Yeah, no. Okay. He's uh, actually tied around me. Yeah. Yes. And as she like ties ties like the rope around her wrist, she's like, hmm, "This is very familiar. <laughs> We've done this before." And she like yanks it just as like out of a reflex from when we were in the back of that other town. Don't forget, Rizia, two poles. They're all mine. All right. Yes. You move out, and you are all immediately seized with this sense of vertigo. Um, as you, the snow crunches underneath your feet, what, what looked like five feet now looks like it's about three feet or two. It just feels incredibly small. After a few feet looking back, seeing the mouth of the cave behind you, it almost feels like you're doing a tightrope walk uh, as you head across this snow. Occasionally, when you look over, you feel a lurching in your stomach. Uh, The wind buffets, and each of you steady yourself as best you can. I need all of you to make a uh, reflex, or probably let's make a, um, uh, sorry, uh, it's, uh, yes, a reflex save, and it's gonna be a reflex save DC 14. Yes. DC save, so, okay. So reflex, 20, reflex. 21. Thank you, Alexander. All right. Okay. Where do we find what our reflexes are? On your main screen towards the top. <laughs> and who, who is on my left and right? Actually, I'm usually at the back of the group, so who's in front of me? Uh, that's going to be a 22 for me. Okay. Uh, steady, your feet in the snow. Uh, you find yourself, but your left shoulder mm. brushing against the cliffside. You're trying to stay so far away from the edge. You can feel Anaho's trembling through the through the rope. Um, 
I got a 15. A 15? <laughs> <laughs> Rizia, R- Rizia, uh, you know, one of your whatever your 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 feet kind of like slips a bit close to the edge. You pull back away, and what was yours, Rasmus? And I'm still mourning the loss of my gold. Okay, so <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> so this is important. Who's in front of me? Oh, okay. Uh, you guys tell me what your marching order was. I should it have asked that first. first. It's, it's typically front. been it's typically been Rizia in the be front. With me, Val? Uh, Val has, I believe, the best balance climbing in uh, um, acrobats, so I think he should be in front, just because if something dicey does come up. Um, sure. Then it could be Val, to... Val, Rizia, Anaho, Rowan, Rowan, and then, and then, and then Rasmus. Rasmus. But yeah, absolutely, Val wants to. Okay, him. what did Rowan get? <laughs> Oh, Rowan, thank you. Uh, yeah. Rowan. <laughs> because I'm using my duck and cover feature, oh, which allows me to share the reflex of another um, person. Ba-bum, ba-bum, ba-bum. And it would only make sense story-wise if it's the person that I could actually reach. Yeah, yeah. Rowan. I'm, I'm trying to remember her oh, reflex why? plus. <laughs> yeah, Rowan got a 16. Okay, okay. Well, I did not. So I, uh, you, you flavor that as you will. But what did you roll? Leaning. What was your total? Uh, uh, what is my <laughs> it was a five on the die, and my reflex is a plus two. So that is a seven. A seven. seven. You um, yeah, I've duck and cover so I can share. Uh, nice. All right, so uh, your foot slips uh, to the side just as a gust of wind happens. Um, and you feel your, your yank on the rope, your foot goes down, you pull back on Rowan. Rowan has to make another check. Oh! Did Hob just say, don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, that's on you. No! Oh. The one time it's good for the DM to hit the nat 20. Um, oh. Rowan happened to be leaning back away toward the wall in the same moment that you start to slip off and you sort of do one of these, your, your arms, you let go with one arm of the rope and you kind of pinwheel to keep balance and you feel Rowan pull you back. What are you doing? Thank you. How do you daft? Keep your balance, lad. Thank you. <laughs> and he's just going to keep on All right. a bit more flat boy. against the wall. All right, you move forward, um, and you do see it starts to slope up slightly. After about 20 minutes of climbing, uh, the breath is burning in your lungs, the cold just chilling you all the way deep into your chest, um, your feet growing numb from the tension and the cold. Um, the the Just the sense of impending at any moment falling over uh, it, it, it begins to fray the nerves i need you all to make another check no are we adding anything to it it's a reflex say oh no. Ro- man rowan is crushing it that's another nat 20 for rowan 21 okay uh, uh, I'm 27 27 okay that's a good question Plus joffrey four. what was that I'm gonna add plus four. Okay. Are right, you gonna use a four on your plus four from so your uh, to six mad chatter bonuses? Fifteen for Anaho. Oh my goodness, oh, Anaho. Fifty. You failed again. I rolled a five again. So oh. that is. Get rid 11. of that dice. Okay. Well, again, I've already I told you that I rolled cover. another nat one uh, with Rowan. Uh, so basically, rinse and repeat what happened a moment ago. Um, this time, Rowan stops. You're doing it on purpose! I want to see what your reflexes are. Help me up. <sighs> she sighs. That's the line. Val <laughs> looks over his shoulder and uh, shouts to Rizia, trying over the wind. You better hope your friend doesn't kill my friend. Oh, we can switch. It's a matter well, of no, that they Anaho. don't. Took, we <laughs> don't need to switch. It's all going well right now. Rowan, just help him. Let's keep going. Please, please keep moving. Yes, we can. 
<laughs> so the the chat is is wondering, um, you know, why didn't they go back the way they came? Uh, I, yeah, that's a good question. They kept asking each other if anyone remembered the way, uh, but they none of we them came, decided to we try. Fell into a crypt. Yeah. yeah. We fell down into it, so we can't go back up. Yeah. Well, there, there was we a. Into it. You had rope. You had. I mean, I'm not saying you could or couldn't. No, we but, didn't have. Well, we had a, we had our rope, but we yeah. felt. My understanding is that we fell like far down, like, and there's no way going back up. That was my understanding. It was like a magical. Because we didn't I have a rope. Like a port- yeah. yeah, I thought it was like a magical portal of some sort. We came into the crypt and just. Oh, no, it, so was it, was a, it was like a slide. Yeah, it was like a slide. It was yeah, it wasn't a magical portal. Oh. It was slick with yeah. some form of lubricant. I'm but sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, back up that but in any case, um, yeah, let's walk across the goat's trail atop <laughs> our with death wind blowing. Yeah, uh, just, committed now. Yeah. All right, so you are committed. Uh, <laughs> after uh, two, I mean, uh, the DM. Hey, never let it be said that I am a killer DM. I saved you twice tonight with Rowan's rolls. <laughs> Um, and so uh, you eventually, the trail widens and you find yourself um, wrapping back around. Uh, you can see you're, you're headed to the direction of the same path that you came from and you can see the peak that you climbed to get up into the temple off to your left and you find yourself on steadier ground. Everyone uh, breathes a sigh of relief looking over your shoulder, uh, that path is indeed quite thin and it was quite fortunate that you survived. You mean to tell me, Rizia, we could have just gone that way to get to there? Uh, you know, um... And not have to deal with that worm. Listen, I didn't know that and also, if it would not been for that worm, uh, Valfina wouldn't have gotten all those wonderful gems. Yeah, I'll, like, puff up his chest as he walks by a little bit, like... <laughs> And also, don't you feel stronger? Or maybe we should rest first, and then you'd feel stronger. <laughs> cool. You know, it, it's it's odd now that you um, now that you've had a moment to kind of get your bearings and look around. Mm-hmm. Do you guys remember what time of day you came into the temple? No. Nope. None of you. Early morning, wasn't it? Like mm-hmm. Early morning, kind yeah, of. Yeah, well, you were kind yeah. of a mid morning. Uh, you kind yeah, of came up did. from. You look and you see it. It now can't be more than. Two hours past dawn. Um, you must have passed more than a full day inside there. Whatever happened in that uttermost part of the temple, perhaps when you were frozen or something else, mm-hmm. uh, a full day has passed. Mark that off, Rizia. A day. How many days do I have left? Sorry. You said two two thirds. Yes. Yeah, so, right. So you have you should have nineteen days remaining now. Okay. It, he said Rowan has about, two uh, days. Rowan. Yeah, mm-hmm. Rowan has like three days. No, Rowan. I uh, Rowan should well, have this right? track, but I think Rowan is down to eight days. Mm. There's no effing way. <sighs> Can we please keep going? Yes. That would go. be very nice. I don't care where we go as long as we get out of the wind, get away from the cliffs. We just need to get back through the path. Yeah, Adam I, said something about a place that we could stop last something or other. I'm it, sure we can it, rest there. It is a tavern. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so you start making your way back toward the path. And uh, as you do, um, things become more familiar territory, having been through the Rakers now for days. It feels you can't remember the last time you truly felt a sense of warmth. Um, <laughs> it's Rizia just been. Feels at home. <laughs> <laughs> it has just been incessant cold, incessant wind, um, but at least now there is sufficient ground beneath your feet. And as you walk along, um, Rowan kind of calls out, "So, Rizia, what, what does the sword say to you?" He says a lot of things. He sounds like a sassy old man, to be honest. And you don't have it in your hands right now, correct? No, he's okay. cheap. Yeah. <laughs> he sees through my eyes, uh, and he wants to collect the stones or whatever. I don't know what it does. Do you think when you get hurt, he gets hurt? Or likewise, when he gets hurt, like, hit something hard, you get hurt? Um, not sure, but he said that we're bonded and something about, uh, he's bonded to me until I die or something like that. 
Ooh. Ooh. Yep. Yeah. All right. As you continue walking along, is anyone doing or saying anything differently? Or are you just going to... You, you soon find yourself passing um, the, the tree and where you went off the path, and it continues north. You continue up that way. I'll keep uh, an eye out for the uh, like the cats and the yeti-like creatures and kind of anything, but especially those. Okay. That I'll, um, we'll keep next to Rizia, not right next to her, but kind of using her as a windshield. Smart. So. <laughs> okay. So, Valvino, yes. can I have my crossbow back? Ah, yeah. And back the crossbow. Can I have my dagger back? Uh huh. And this doesn't do me much good without the bolts. If I could have those back. Thank you very much. And you'll see me stick my other three bolts in there that I kept from you, and I'll put them on. Very good now. Very good. Uh, yep. Ready. Valfina. Yes. Catch. And if you turn around and look at him, you see that at some point he's picked up a walking stick along the ground that he's kind of leaning on, and he throws to you his light crossbow and the bolts. Um, how about you keep this and I get my sword back? You are much better at the distance than I am. <laughs> you that did down that so, wall. But I really like my sword. You can have this dagger. <laughs> but he he just kinda he nods his head thinking. Alright. As he'll draw the long sword out and throw it over to you. You know if you don't like gifts, you don't have to take them, Belpino. It's a choice. You have a choice. Do you want it? Or do you need it? I was referring to my dagger. If you're oh. so willing to give like it away. Bell's looking at Anaho and says, You didn't really give me a choice on that one. Then he looks to Rizzi and goes, What are you even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Go back to talking to your to your ex. I don't want to oh. talk to him right now. <laughs> Rizzi will actually go over to Rasmus. Um, as she puts her arm around him. Are you okay? I'm tired. But I'm hoping to get through much of this by the evening. Stay behind uh, me. I'll make a path. It'll make it a little bit easier for you. As you forge the path ahead and as Anaho's eyes scan, Anaho, please uh, <laughs> roll for perception. Yeah, absolutely. I would During also like... That- Go ahead. Val walks over to Rasmus and takes out his little white stone that like hovers. And he like you can hold on to this for a while and hands it over to Rasmus to see if that helps make him feel better. <laughs> like uh did I cast identify on this thing? I, I yes you did uh, I think yeah, no. you did, yeah, yeah, he identified it. Yeah. No, he did. Okay. Then he's gonna Didn't hold he? It. Am I wrong? Even if he didn't, let's just pretend. Just yeah, yeah, we'll whatever. say you did. I mean, you've had time, um, yeah. You know it, it grants a boon to your nimbleness. Uh, yeah, he's like, thank you. Um, and he's just going to take it and kind of cover your hand back with it. That will not help. Uh, a little flag in the veil and a one fire would be quite nice. With that, he pulls out uh, Rowan's ale and just kind of hands it over. <laughs> Don't chuckle. If you're as Wait, good as don't off. let her see. <laughs> <laughs> He's just gonna Rowan's looking off, the admiring the, the sky and the trees. And <laughs> if you're as good as offering things, then be as good as walking. Let's just get out of this, and I will be fine. Val's just like squinting at him, and like. You will take my gen- like, you will let me care for you. You then- can ca- you can care for me with that sword, but... 
It's best to keep on moving. What was your uh, roll, Anaho? 22. 22? Oh, okay. Well, then, yes. Um, as you're looking ahead, looking for signs of cats and hairy things, um, something does... Oh, Josh, God. I just got to stop looking at you. Like, I, 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 I say I, things, I say things, and then something goes through my wall. head to look at Josh, and every time, every stinking time. I uh, blame my religious upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you catch a glint in the morning sunlight. It, it looks like ice, except it seems to, to move. Um, Rizia, there is no, like, uh, what are their lakes, rivers, bodies of waters around here, are there? Well, there's bodies of water kind of around everywhere, but Liquid. what do you mean? Like, if you look right over there, you should see. I don't know if you can see. I got good eyes. But you should be able to see that there kind of looks like some shiny ice or ice reflecting something glimmering like ice. What but I it know? looks like it's moving. Oh. Uh, okay. DM, what I know? Um, as you look, uh, you don't see anything. Are you sure you're seeing it right, Naho? How far in front of me does it seem to be? Are we talking uh, 10 feet or No, you could feet? probably 50 yards. Uh, it was it was just like in the sunlight, and then it seemed to move beneath a tree ahead. Oh, it is a good 50 yards. It is a quite a ways up there. But, uh, wait, uh, there it is again. You see, it closer. looks... Uh, at first, it looks like there's just ice falling from the tree. Uh, but then, in moments, it materializes into the form of a woman. I'm going to have my crossbow ready. My uh, crossbow ready. Okay. Uh, oh, you, right there, right there. It's now right. you see this woman glittering uh, in the ice and snow, and uh, she has a huge, looks like some sort of uh, mace, morning star ice juts off of her, and she saunters um, with a bit of like swagger to her motion as she comes closer to all of you. I'll just throw my head, hello there, and like kind of waving to the group like maybe we should back up and leave hello there friendly one who are you um dm yes is this woman attractive can we see if she's she's like ice i mean her features from here um you know difficult to make out the, the features of her face because they're ice um it's a slightly bluish tint so it's not purely translucent um but yes i mean her form and her figure could only be described as voluptuous um and you know while you don't make out any detail there is no hint of clothing or anything so with that val will kind of detach himself a little bit from vivi and like step to the side and make himself separate from her how dare you? <laughs> yeah, did you, like, you, did you so just quick. got dropped? <laughs> Vivi just got dropped. <laughs> you, dropped so you could say, you could say, Rizia, that you got the axe, or, oh. you know, she, or you got the cold shoulder. Ah, ah okay. So uh, that's a good make idea. Himself separate and kind of just like make himself seem a little taller. He's less hunched over from the wind. He's a little bit taller and he's just like checking this lady out. That is not a good idea, Val. Uh, we're just on our way. See you later. Uh, the, the, the head of this woman turns and kind of gazes um, you can see a, a pale, kind of shining blue light uh, where her eyes should be. And she moves closer to Valfino. You, well, not too good. you seem interesting. And she approaches. Aww. Um, thank you. So do you. Ah, I'm glad you think so. Uh, Come a bit closer. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Val will just kind of hesitate for a second, like he's looking at this woman. And as attractive as she may be. As you're looking at it, she kind of like gauging your eyes. 
Um, you it. notice the figure kind of shifts form, so the light of the morning sun properly catches uh, all of her uh, her best assets. <laughs> um, ah. Val will try and keep in mind that she's got a big weapon, and she came out of nowhere, but at the same time, he is still very distracted by her uh, assets. Assets. And um, so he doesn't take a step forward. As, your, as this thought goes through Val's mind, um, there's no weapon. Just gone. Val will stay still. He, uh, you have a ruggedly handsome face. Can I be on, on like, point, like, ready in case anything happens? Sure. So what, what does that mean? Like, what are you doing? Uh, like a whole action. So if an aggression takes place, then I will start firing. Okay, so you've got your crossbow ready, trained. All right. Yeah, I'm still trying to warn everyone to just leave. Okay. Um, what are you doing, Rasmus? Rasmus is leaning against the staff. And he's just looking. I'm ready for anything, but I am also cold and wish to keep moving. Val, if you die to her assets, I do not care. It is cold and I want to get out of this. Madam, it is wonderful to meet you. Uh, she kind of, you see like an irritated glance toward Rasmus. <laughs> and he's just smiling. <laughs> Um, what about you, Rizia? Um, Rizia will actually be aware of which direction the wind is blowing, and she'll make an effort to kind of block the wind from Rasmus, seeing that he is struggling, um, and almost kind of moves in a protective stance. If she can, depending on where the wind is, uh, she would like to stand in between him and the lady. Oh, so she... Still blocking the wind. Between Valfino and the... the oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Between Rasmus. Oh, Rasmus. Okay. block Rasmus from the wind, okay. but in a way where I can also kind of give him half cover, if that works. Okay. Um, Depending on which yeah. way the wind is blowing. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, I'll, I'll allow that. That's fine. Rizia, as you touch Rasmus, or as you get in between them, he kind of leans on you a bit and you feel his weight on you. Yeah. You feel his skin isn't just cold. It is cold. It's not like someone who's been out in the cold for too long. It's like deathly cold. As soon as she feels that against her skin, she, you see what, as you kind of lean your weight into her, she actually shifts her feet so that she's in a better stance to kind of brace uh, the weight. And she feels your... <laughs> Sorry, yes. antiquitous. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, I love it. License to chill. <laughs> um, as she feels uh, your skin touch hers, she actually turns and looks over her shoulders and she starts to remove some of um, her furs and she puts it over you. <laughs> the uh, the motion of uh, Rizia removing some clothing catches Val's eye. And gets you're not even looking at me. Now. You're looking at me. <laughs> no, no, get out of here, betrayer. Val, 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 Val's got that that swivel neck. <laughs> Rizia, he does. Nothing he does. but a side hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Rizzy ain't nobody side ho, let me tell you that. <laughs> uh, as soon as your your head starts to move that direction, you you as you look back, it's almost like without moving, uh, the woman is now less than 10 feet away from you. At this uh, distance, you can see uh, she is incredibly alluring and her eyes uh, peer into you. Uh, voluptuous doesn't begin to describe her charms. <laughs> and as she looks over, she says, I don't want to fight. Um, let me rephrase. You don't want to fight. Um, I only require a few moments of your time. I do get so cold, and it's rare I find one as handsome and as rugged as you. Um, just a few moments with me there in the trees, and I will leave your companions yes. alone. I'll shoot. If, if, can I hear this? You, yeah, yeah, you can hear it. You just shoot. Okay, all there's right. No can, yeah. There's no way that can be good. There it goes. Cool there it goes. So one body's person. 
I want to be with you in the. I'm co no. <laughs> no that's not good. There goes diplomacy. There goes any chance to get out of this. All right, roll for initiative. DM has a four on the die. If you shoot me, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh, it is quite possible. He's actually, he's not trying to shoot it. He's trying to bring you to your senses. I thought about actually shooting Val too, but he decided not to. That would've been so funny. That would've been so funny. Hey, whose Who's turn is it to Vivi? roll? Uh, yeah, let's put Vivi up. Vivi's up for initiative. It was you. It's you, Rory, because it, it was Hob that was rolling it all last night. Oh, that's right. That's right. Fine. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you asked for it. Yeah, you did. All right. You asked. That's for a good. It, right? That's a good forty-foot shot. That's a. That's an You're easy shot. Good. All right. What's what is it? I can't see it. One. I had a one. A one. You can't even talk, Rory. You're the one who's like, I'm just gonna shoot. The moment. <laughs> the, the moment you begin to depress your finger on the crossbow Pressure. bolt. With a preternatural speed, you see the woman just glide forward with blinding speed. At... I don't know. He's the only no, 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 no. Right for Valfino. Valfino, yeah, remind me of your armor class. Two. Um. Sorry, you're sleeping on the couch tonight. Let me tell you. <laughs> Valfino dies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if this is how Valfino dies, amazing. Uh, 13. 13 armor class? Oh, that's yeah. not very good. Yeah, he has leathers on. He's not. <laughs> well, maybe not for long. Um, she grabs you and with insane strength, you are grappled. Roll d20, please. Oh, oh my gosh. Know. Man, my dice are just hot tonight. Doesn't matter what, what, it doesn't matter what direction I'm going. Go ahead and roll. Am I adding anything to this? Uh, yeah, it's, it, I, I know what to I know what to add to this for your. I'm not gonna bore you with CMDs yeah, and CMDs. 19. <laughs> this icy cold arm, as it goes around you, the strength is enormous, and the chill goes right through your leathers, and all of you see the creature sprints away at blinding speed, moving about let's call it 35 feet or so. Let me catch it here. Wrong. The entire time, Val's just thinking, mm, I like a strong woman. <laughs> Bl blinding speed pulling you 35 feet away as Anaho, now you can loose your crossbow bolt. That is now a, this, I mean, this happens so quickly. You can't even call this simultaneous action. Uh, and when I say preternatural, it's as though she could read your 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 emotion, your thought. So it's a good 60 foot shot now. And as you get ready to roll, that's where we're gonna go to our one and only break. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time tonight because it is Vivi's short night. Uh, so when we come back from the break, it'll be an abbreviated second part of the stream. Um, they're interestingly party, what's that? Yes, we'll do sponsors when we come back from the break. Our giveaway tonight, we're going to do two of them. Um, and the first one will be one of these blue box mugs. The second one I've already mentioned, we're doing the Treasures of Greyhawk later tonight. That'll be our grand prize yeah. giveaway. But tis the season for some nice warm coffee, hot chocolate, um, and you need a blue box mug. These blue box mu mugs are, uh, they're dishwasher safe. This is, I don't know how they do this. It's like enameled on. This is not a sticker. Um, you know, I, I I love, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it, I'm not gonna say it. Anyway, these are awesome. Uh, th these are the best mugs in the business and that'll be our first giveaway type exclamation point giveaway in the chat and blue box, wait, 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 wait. If you're watching tonight and you haven't yeah, followed, yeah. if you're a follower and you haven't sub, or if you're a sub mm -hmm. whose sub has expired, we have one question for you tonight. What are you doing? And by the way, give us a follow, by the way, I will let the players know there were ways to escape from this without combat. Uh, one of them could include sacrifice uh, of Valfino, uh, but there were other ways as well. But that's all right. Uh, you chose yeah. as you chose, and I respect I'm, the choice. Hang on. Don't lump us into that decision. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should have shot for Valfino's Achilles. Uh, you know, run. I thought about that. Just visit that Pat Draws said, um, this is what you get for having Greyhawk's ass. Everybody wants <laughs> yeah. That's right. Everybody yeah. wants a piece of that, Valfino. All right. Blue Box. We'll be right back. Those numbers are insane. 
What's my highest? <laughs> you know, I, 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 I had other options. I thought about other options, but it already readied my crossbow, and I had already been telling everyone to leave. No, it, I can't call. I can't call it a bad choice. I mean, really, it was sense. it was a reasonable choice. Um, Very and just, much so. just yeah. the wrong choice, but reasonable. If, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll leave the mics hot as always. Thank you, all the mad chatters, for your mad chattery. If Rasmus had more energy, he would have done a few more things, but dude's just out. Dude's out of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's kind of where Anaho is. Anaho is like... We're cold. cold literally cold like, and not doing well and no stamina. Like, yeah. I, like I've Ugh. just been trying to move. I almost fell I, off a mountain twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he's just... He's not... Yeah, so we, we all attack Valfino and then run. Right? Game that plan? Not, Three, two, uh, one, break. Nice. Val is not aware of the immediate danger he's in right now. But well, yeah, I picked up on that. He is quite <laughs> happy at the moment. Oh yeah. my gosh. I literally have done something almost point for point as what John's doing right now, and I'm like, and it's turned out roughly the same, except for I got the person a little bit further away from the group. Oh, yeah. And then made an attack on them, and mm. I got to roll with advantage because surprise attack. Yeah. And it came out to a nat 20. Oof. And she, it was a dryad, of course, and she had prior cast Shillelagh on her uh, arm. Mm-hmm. So, beautifully so, since in my games when you roll a nat 20, the first die is max, and mm -hmm. the second die you roll, mm. it, 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 oh, it, was, it was nasty damage. It came out to like 20, 20 damage, I think, in 5e. Mm. And it was mm, <laughs> with like a level 4 party. Yeah. Beautiful times. You know what else is beautiful? You. Those numbers I sent you in the chat. Oh, no. That's ridiculous. <laughs> My highest is a 13. And that's for, what do I have? For healing? Do you I take really... the hit point or do you take the, the skill point? I take the skill point every okay. time. Because <laughs> yeah. ever since having Brim, who yeah. I never took the skill point yeah. because it wouldn't help me no matter what because he has such... I didn't even know about it until like halfway through. Yeah, no, I with Brim, I only took HP. And so that's why he has just like at level six, 110 or something yeah. HP, oh. just something ridiculous. Um, but no, I take the I take the effing skill point every time. And my like my worst is escape artist, why and disabled device. I have a negative. Oh. Negative what? Six. Ooh, you actually might have me. And ride is my... negative one. Swim is a negative three. Survival is a negative one. Yeah, uh, and I, I've literally one. put two ranks into ride just to try and give myself a negative one instead of a negative three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's so annoying because my dude used to ride horses, which is why he knows <laughs> how to take care of horses so well. Yeah. And I'm like, this is so dumb. Why did I have such yeah. a horrible ride? I, uh, yeah, yeah, negative six, sleight of hand. So that's why you're here. You're here for all the stuff that I am horrible at. Yeah, sleight of hand plus seven. Jeez. I'm negative six. Yeah, I just sent you my high numbers, not my medium numbers. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> looking at your high numbers, Mr. Plus 18. You do not fail a stealth check unless you roll a one. Yeah. Pretty that's much. ridiculous because rolling a two you have a dirty 20. that's why i was trying to like bring that's, up the whole strategy stuff is like hey guys like if we really <laughs> capitalize on what we do obviously it doesn't work it doesn't work on a purple worm right yeah. but but well kind of i mean val was way up yonder i mean i don't know if the worm could sense where he was or not but yeah. in general but like the if, we're, if we're somewhere and we needed something off someone or if you need me to disappear, I'll disappear and still be yeah. visible. The problem with, because I agree, I think it's best to try and keep Rasmus in the back, but the problem is a lot of the Inquisitor builds is for up close. Oh, well, is that why your character is suffering right now then? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not, not for that reason. 
Um, but now, like, w- like I said, with my crossbow, I have a plus four to hit. Versus with ten. my sword, it's a plus nine. Hey, hey, I have a plus ten with my crossbow. You shut up. Get out of um, here. But I think I only have like a plus five or something with my dagger. Plus five and plus oh, six. I, I dropped my long sword in the cave, so I no longer have that. Uh, you broke it, didn't you? Oh, well, it broke, and so I was using the stats of a short sword. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he dropped it in the cave when Val let him borrow the long sword. The long one, yeah. And then now so you'd, have a, you'd have a plus he ten. Have a sword anymore. Otherwise, he won't have taken back his sword. So you have a plus ten, and then it's magical. So it's like a plus eleven with that sword. Yeah. So plus eleven, plus twelve. I'll be right back. But it's it's too late. I got a crossbow. You have your sword. Hey, John. Yes. Um. I messaged you asking about... Yes, I just um, saw that in the Discord. I missed it earlier. It's uh, really inappropriate. <laughs> well, uh, I just appreciate if you wouldn't share those pictures with anyone. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> Beautiful. See, I'm so happy I have that one reflex um, feat because, like, my fortitude's great. My will is great. My reflex is horrendous. I'll be right back. I'll miss you. Please don't. Yeah, like my touch armor class is horrible. My normal armor class is good. Whenever we get to a point that we can actually have a shopping episode or like <laughs> have shopping time in between when we somehow have money instead of Rizia getting rid of the choice of thousands of gold. Listen, it, I would have had thousands of gold, but y'all would have freaking died. I <laughs> don't care. Money over life. I need a new set of armor. Even <laughs> Money if over life? Funeral. Got it. Like, You're gonna look freaking fabulous at your funeral. Hey, hey I John, hope. how long do we have until we're back? <laughs> Uh, like one minute, ideally. Uh, but if you, if you, I mean, you can take another if you need it. And Oof. I'll tinkle fast. All right. Could you could you tinkle use fast. some of Phelan's money to yes, buy me like? some armor? What do you want, girl? You got to I just I need some she new. But we haven't had a choice. We haven't had a chance. <laughs> this this poor boy. I've been running with like crappy armor, but it makes sense for what he's gone through and what he's doing. <clears throat> But now I don't even have a sword. Listen, boo. Listen, boo boo. When we get somewhere. When we finally get that glyph off your hand and yeah. Rowan's hand, then we'll be able to buy some stuff. <laughs> buy you know the trick way to get a glyph off? Cut it off what? and then never die. heal. Oh, no, just yeah. die. I mean, yes. <laughs> I'm not saying do that. I'm just. If you haven't yet, type exclamation point giveaway in the chat. Exclamation point giveaway, and you'll be entered in the yes. Is that is what we are? Is what is the is the thing? The lady, this thing? Uh, no, 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 no. You know who that is, John? Uh, I feel like I should remember. He's not five e. I feel like I should. Oh Um, yeah, I forgot. From Icewind Oh uh, yes, okay. Uh huh. Because I have a frost maiden. Maiden queen. Yeah, I have a frost yeah. maiden who looks like that as well. Exactly that. That's what I was trying to look for because I have that mini. I just don't know where it is. I it was gotcha, me. gotcha. All right, here we go. Blue box is back. Don't do it, don't do it. I'm naked. Josh, put your pants on. Uh, hey. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us here at Blue Box, and thank you for all the mad chatter support. Uh, if you joined us late, uh, we did try to get started a little more quickly tonight. We continue to try to hone that down. Uh, we've not been good on that with our Sunday stream, but uh, oh, we had. I was like, excuse me, I thought I was doing. Really no, you're doing fantastic. It's usually it's all right. I, I'm 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 usually at fault. It's usually my fault. Um, but uh, yeah, our Sunday stream we did cosplay, and so we had the cosplay last Tuesday night. I want to thank all these players. They were all fantastic. But but clearly, uh, hands down, Rizia was the fan favorite. Um, and then on Sunday we had cosplay with the urchins, uh, the the understreet rats of Altamira in our Tears of Aired campaign. And uh, I think it was, they were all good, uh, but I think it was Mila, played by Rachel, that won uh, the fan kind of art uh, contest uh, for cosplay popularity. That was fun. Uh, so a couple of announcements quickly, and then our quick sponsor shout outs, and we're going to get back into it tonight because we are on the short night. Uh, first of all, thank you to all of our sponsors, Art of Mike Disney. 
uh, just a, a personal friend, a fan favorite, uh, a, a, a gentleman's heart, kind to everyone, talent, uh, unbelievably talented guy. Follow him at Art of Mike Disney. Uh, he's a DM. He's a player. He's a painter. He's a he's a sculptor. He plays does with green stuff. He draws. He just. Mike Disney, enough said. Uh, Ferox Fabrications, actually uh, Vivi's friend, Darren, tremendously talented guy that does all kinds of uh, wood uh, sculpting and laser engraving. Um, we've got the mini holders here. We've got the Ferox Fabrications dice tubes. You know, in fact, we'll give one, one of those away next week on Tuesday night. Uh, we haven't done one of those in a couple of weeks. And follow Ferox Fabrications, a great friend of our channel. Then we have uh, Cowboy Hob. Uh, her art is the artwork that you're seeing right now on the stream. Super talented artist and a good role player as well so follow cowboy hob and I believe she is open for commission. She just finished one for Swole Initiative. Uh, and then uh, also tonight, Mantic Games, makers of Terrain Crate, uh, also a maker of Kings of War. Uh, Martin and his crew, uh, they're over the, the other side of the pond and they're great supporters of our channel. Uh, anytime I ask them for something, a box arrives within a week and a half or so, uh, you know, with all the shipping time and everything, and they're just, they're fantastic. Mantic Games. Uh, and then lastly tonight, we're gonna shout out Troll Lord Games, uh, the makers of uh, both Castles and Crusades and the creators of the World of Aired, uh, which is the world that we're playing in on our Sunday games for Tears of Aired. And uh, Chuck and Steven, great all around guys. And please also uh, share, uh, we're, gonna, we're not gonna, uh, I'll explain that to you later, Vivi, we're not gonna do that one tonight. Um, but uh, with the, uh, with, uh, I've lost my train of thought, with uh, Tears, uh, with uh, Troll Lord Games, uh, Chuck uh, actually is really fighting a strong bout of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, he, he had to be hospitalized uh, last night. So I don't know if we do we have an update on him, Phantom. Uh, Robert te texted me late last night, and uh, our thoughts are with Chuck and our friends over at TLG. Yeah, good luck to him. No update yet. All right, so we'll let you know if we hear anything, but uh, keep Chuck in your thoughts. Um, all right, for announcements, uh, tomorrow night we'll be doing our uh, favorite magic items on Lore Masters Arcanum. So your favorite D&D magic items. If any of you in the chat have a favorite item you'd like us to talk about tomorrow night or you'd like to join us on, uh, go ahead and pop that in our Discord. If you go to our Discord, there is a Lore Masters Arcanum channel in the Discord and pop any magic item in there. Uh, the Cloak of Billowing was already mentioned by uh, Thomas who plays uh, click in our Sunday stream and uh, we'll be doing all kinds of other magic items. We'll be joined by Dave of Guild Superior. Uh, DM Dave will be on with uh, Robert and I and that's going to be a really fun chat. So don't miss that tomorrow night at 545 Central. And then on Sunday we'll be back with a third episode of Fall of Red Dawn. And Every stream is getting better. The role play is always great, but the tech issues are slowly being stomped out and uh, certainly anyone that has streamed at any level, particularly if you're trying to do uh, you know, some of the fun extra stuff and the technical stuff, um, it can be challenging to get that worked out, especially when you're trying to work with a potato, as Rory is, and I think he is doing the I'm best one can do with a potato. Uh, with all of that said, the Ring of DM Control, yes. Uh, let's do our giveaway uh, for the mug. Our first giveaway winner tonight is, and if you see your name pop up, you have one. Tracy! Congratulations, Tracy! Do you have a blue box mug on the way? Uh, that is the winningest family, Tracy and Pat. My goodness. Uh, yeah, I, they were, I think they were, they were like uh, rubbing it in everybody's face this week, how many things they've won in our Discord. Uh, teasing there, no. Uh, all right, so now for the second giveaway, um, which will be our grand prize tonight, I'm gonna have you type in the chat, exclamation point, T O G uh, for Treasures of Greyhawk. Uh, not yet, not yet. Okay, now you can do it. Exclamation point T O G in the chat. That will get you in the giveaway at the end of the night for our Treasures of Greyhawk. All right, I think I did my rapid fire on everything I needed to cover. Did I forget anything, crew? <laughs> I don't think nope. I did. All right. Nope. Very good. Then with that, we return to the combat. All right, oh, so wait, it, I forgot we were fighting. <laughs> yeah, if you if you <laughs> missed the beginning, if you missed the beginning because we did start quickly, uh, the you know, the the theme of tonight's stream was which gold, and uh, indeed Rizia did make a choice, 
and she chose the golden axe and uh, what she has gotten for it. Um, she's still not really certain, except uh, knowing it is a sentient weapon, uh, which contains a slightly addled, mildly flirtatious, and somewhat grumpy old man, uh, which Josh that. has cited <laughs> as me. Um, but I, I don't really see myself as any of those things. Um, all right, but anyway. I, def I definitely see I as one of them. That. I know, I know you did. Oh, just Josh, he's been busting Josh. my chops all night. Oh, I, all right. I definitely see him as one of them. <laughs> All right, and <laughs> with that, here we go. We return to Blue Box. And so right before we went uh, to the break, you had um, this strange-looking uh, woman made of ice uh, that ran off with Valfino after trying to talk him uh, into joining her in the woods uh, for a brief tryst. Uh, Anaho uh, felt compelled uh, to not allow such uh, an encounter to occur and decided to, fire a, decided to fire a crossbow. The moment he started to squeeze the bolt, uh, this woman moved with what I have described now twice as a preternatural, supernatural, beyond a scope of vision speed, snatched up Valfino with one steely iced arm and carried him away. Um, his buns flapping behind her and his only thought is I like a woman with strength and now it is your role, Anaho. Well, you see, before you say go to break, I had already rolled. Okay, and your roll? I roll? Although I roll a one on initiative, I am more speedy than her speediness. I rolled a natural 20. A natural 20 on the roll! I Outstanding! Roll, I have a plus 10, so that's 30 to hit. 30 to hit! Outstanding! All right, tell me what you're firing at her. <clears throat> what kind of bolt? Uh, my short, my, just a regular standard bolt. Uh, just a regular standard bolt. That's great! Yeah, I don't think poison's going to do anything. <clears throat> you fire the bolt. You see it boom, strike the ice and it's impervious to your bolt as she runs your bolt actually snaps and falls to the ground. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> all right, now we go to you, Rizia. You are closest. You see the flurry of snow as her as her feet, the ice woman move uh, through the snow. Well, uh, you know, you're the only one with speed to actually catch up to her in one round. You are that barbarian. You have that speed. Uh, then she... Actually, before she leaves, Rasmus, are you okay? <laughs> As you see, a, an alien pop from his chest and... Um, oh, not okay! <laughs> <laughs> I had the soup. Um, anyone for reference? Anyone get... Okay. Um, Rasmus will lean onto... It's my 20th. He leans on the staff and will just kind of like weakly push you forward. Go Don't save, worry, I'll get him. Uh, go save his horny butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll, I'll consider that free talk, even though there was clearly about seven seconds of interaction there, during which time... Oh, it was not seven seconds of interaction. He leaned on a staff, responded to a question, wasn't particularly hurried. I would call that at least seven seconds, but I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a nice you DM tonight. That we hugged, we had a picnic, <laughs> and then she got I am feeling like a very generous DM tonight. I will consider that an instantaneous conversation. <laughs> Rizia, what do you do? Rizia is going to uh, move forward and attack. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you right now. So that distance... Listen, John. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, uh, you can, you can, if you're going to try to catch, she's moving with speed. You're in a chase. Um, so. Is she running away? Yeah. She's carrying Valfino off into the forest. Oh, dang. Okay, now yeah, then I'm. Why do you do that shot? <laughs> She'll run then. No, 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 no. She wasn't carrying him in the forest until you shot. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's not how I remember this. Yeah. I gotta go. I gotta go save them. All right. So you're just running after him. Yeah. <laughs> Both All right. Um, you bounding, uh, long legs, powerful strides through the snow as you're accustomed. Uh, Rasmus. Feel the ground shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Rasmus plumps down um, <laughs> in the snow. Um, Rowan. Oh. <laughs> crap. Here we go again. And she starts running as well. Uh, and then, uh, what are you doing, uh, Anaho? Do you take your movement after your fire? Uh, I'll take my movement over to... I mean, it, 
Oh, man, if my if my bolt literally just like hit and broke, uh -huh. and nothing, nothing to this thing. You know the strike was true. You felt like you hit it right at the oh, base yeah. of the neck. It, I mean, it hit perfect on point and then snapped. And, and to top it off, John, I actually had two natural 20s on that roll. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Oh. So that's what happens yeah. when, uh, obviously, you know, you guys understand metagaming. This oh. creature ha has to have a magic weapon to hit. So oh, you're, sure. yeah. but, you know, you know, just knowing that I had this solid hit and it did nothing to this creature. I know Rizzy is going after it. Rizzy is strong. She has a new axe. I might do some good. Uh, and Rasmus is not doing well. So I'll actually take my movement to move over to Rasmus. Okay. All right. Um, and then can ahead. I take my turn? Yes. He's just going to keep walking. Oh. He's going to keep walking along the path, but it's slow. He's... He's going the same pace. He's kind of walking on the staff, just like they're going to be done and finished with that in a matter of seconds. That's not a I'm good just idea. Keep walking. <laughs> oh my goodness! He's just slowly <laughs> trekking, so he probably gets like five to ten feet. <laughs> He's literally just like slowly going. All right, <laughs> um, then so you do. Uh, what about you, Valfino? As you're being carried away uh, beyond the admiration of strength. And the fluttering buns, what are you doing? Mm. Um, besides being picked up and taken, there hasn't been any like sign of danger, right? Like there's not like she's, mm -mm, she's no. not, like her face hasn't transformed into a monster. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Right? In fact, from this, from this angle, I mean, her form is very admirable, uh, but it is extremely cold. So Val uh, still has all his furs on. Can he feel it through the furs? Oh yes, absolutely. I mean, the moment that arm went around you, um, the chill was intense. Okay. So Val will try and strike up conversation as like. <laughs> she, you're under her arm, right? Right. As you're jostled a lot, what is Val saying? Together a little bit. Just like. So what are you doing all the way out here by yourself? What's going on? Like, he's just like trying to chatter up. <laughs> uh, Where are you taking me? Roll, roll, uh, roll persuasion. Cool. Okay. Uh, persuasion. Mm-hmm. Um. Where do I have? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So with with you're using the the PF sheet, so it would be diplomacy. So that would be a sixteen plus seven. Twenty three. Thank you for the follow. The real son of pride. There really is the real son of pride. I think I get that right. The real. Yeah. Um, and thank you all the mad chatters for the great chattery type exclamation point T O G in the chat. Uh, that is for the uh, treasures of Greyhawk module. Uh, all right. So exactly. Re repeat to me what you say. So what are you doing out here all by yourself? <laughs> what are we doing? Shockingly. So often. You do elicit uh, elicit a response, and as a result, I'm going to take away just a bit of movement from her in the next round, uh, which is what I'll give I'll give you for that outstanding diplomacy roll. You are a charming devil, and as she's carrying you, um, you see, like her 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 body just sort of glides through the snow, um, and her head tilts down. Ah, uh, I will be gentle with you. You are so handsome. All right, it is initiative. You won, or you lost last time, so we go to you. Uh, let's go to you, Rizia, since you're chasing. So, oh, I love, I love your uh, your Zoom uh, title, Vivi. I don't know when that went up, but yeah, that's uh, it awesome. It went up after I saw Josh's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, initiative. What, what, what do you have? Five. You have initiative. Uh, so it is, it is Valfino's charm. Um, she slows in her tracks just a bit as she's gliding along. Uh, Rizia, that's going to allow you to make that catch up of that 10 feet. You may roll to hit. Okay, can I roll with uh, um, old, uh, what's his name? Hel Hel Helsia? Oh, so you pull Halcyon Hel out. 
as you're running, you pull Halcyon out. Uh, what are we? Oh, combat! Wonderful. I. Oh no, no! Please not that. I can't stand those rhyme wenches. Neither can I. Let's go. They're cold <laughs> down to the nethers when you hit them. Please. Well, you know, you said you've been sleeping in this place for 400 years. Let's go. All right, roll to hit. Whatever, I'll see you in. 18 plus. Does he scream when you swing him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he very well could. That'd be great. I really hope so. Uh, why are you in the way to Okay. Um, 18 plus 9. So 27. Yeah, well, and then plus uh, Wait, a bonus. What's happening? There's an additional bonus uh, for house. I don't know this yet. Mm. It's a plus five for the axe. No, you don't know what. No, you, you haven't identified the weapon okay. yet. The axe is a plus eight. Um, yeah, you swing. Um, you hit roll your damage, uh, which your normal damage would be. And I'll tell you what. Uh, I mean, I won't tell you how much there's additional damage that comes from house. Okay. Nine plus 12. You hear in your head. No, no, no. Oh, bugger. You slam the axe in, 21 points of damage. Um, you knock a huge chunk uh, out of the woman. Uh, Alfino, your face is sprayed with ice. Um, I can attack. Uh, so I'm going to say this is, so you're running full speed. She's gliding through snow. You've already taken movement. I get two attacks of level seven. I, I, I know, I know. This, but this, this is a weird. So you're you're in a full chase, and she's got faster movement than you. Um, Don't make me use plus five for an extra attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I I'll I'll, gi- I'll give you. Well, it's, it's actually plus ten for an extra attack. It's plus five for an okay. advantage. I'm gonna say because again, you use that initiative and that sprint, she actually moves faster than you. So like, even as you strike, you see her distancing away. You come back for that second strike. If you want to use uh, 10 of your plus ones, you can. Um, I don't have 10, I only have six. Uh, then you see, uh, you, you pull back to swing again and whew, um, it goes through the air. She has pulled away just enough from you. Now we're going to go to Rowan and uh, Rowan, does Rowan even have a, a missile weapon? I remember Rowan trying to throw her sword at one point, so my guess is she really doesn't. Um, th- so, uh, thank oh, you thank very you much, Pat, Pat Draws. draws. Uh, I'm gonna say Rowan. <sighs> oh, by the Look, gods. Can uh, I use it? <laughs> all right then, no, dude. Uh, you could use it next round. <laughs> Uh, so Rowan is going to sprint to thank you very much Robert she's going to try to like move in an angle thinking to cut this off and let me see that'd be about 30 oh no actually it's a full she's going to get the full movement here because she's not going to attack and oh th- oh my goodness you just loaded her down Rizia you are loaded down all right um and then Rasmus and Anaho you guys are just kind of steadily moving forward uh, well, I'll be trying to uh, convince him to not move away from the group, but perhaps, you know, perhaps we could move by a tree or something out of the wind, something for you to lean on, a bigger stick, you know what I mean? Just lean against the tree, but let's not keep moving or we will not find them again. It's very windy out here. I am very short. Take my advice. That's 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 my turn. That's all he does. All right, Raz, Rasmus. Anything else? Rasmus reaches into his pocket. Can he see them still like running? Yeah, yeah. They're 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 as you see here. They're no more than like sixty to seventy feet away now. Okay, I didn't even plan this. Um, what edition is this? Three point five. Okay. He's going to reach into his pocket. Yep, it'll hit. He's going to pull out that little goblin staff again. Okay. Looking towards her. Are you really going to do that? And he's going to do a fire bolt. Not a fire ball. I know. Really tempted to do fire ball, but no. <laughs> Um, so that is just going to be a firebolt using one of the charges from the goblin staff. 
and it's a maximum of uh, 360 foot range, but I've got to see if I hit um, each creature within its area. And so just understand, and I'm not dissuading you from this, but this roll yeah. to hit, it's, it's, a, it's a range touch attack. This is exactly like firing a bow and you are firing directly toward Rizia, Valfino, and the creature. So a miss, I'm just, a, a miss is as likely to hit one of them as it is to go off into the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. healing them, it's fine. <laughs> um, the Pharaohs, that's fine. I'm actually reading through it because it's different from 5e. So I might not do this. This is confusing, sorry. It says you release a powerful bolt of fire energy that deals 1d6 points of fire damage per caster level, which is, a, this is I think a third level item, um, to each creature within its area. Yes, but you still roll a touch attack, correct? Yeah. And then what's, yeah, yeah. And then what's, the, and what's the radius? That's what I'm trying to figure out. To be an out. area of effect. It doesn't. Here, I'll, I'll tell you real quick. Yeah, sorry. No, it's, it's all right. I'm trying sorry. to look at it. We, 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 don't, we don't generally bog down too much on stuff like this, oh, but every, every Okay, one. so I think it's just the direct line. So that's what that's what I had thought as well, but... Whoops. What on earth? Because, yeah, it says range and then area. I was confused because I was like, this is just saying the same thing. Right, But it's right. a 360-foot line. Yes, okay. So, world to hit. Yeah. Um, so I... Uh, what would I be adding to this to try and hit it? Uh, it's your base attack bonus and then your dexterity because it's a range touch attack. Okay, cool. Yep, I'll be using five of mine for another advantage. Bring me down to one, Manda. Okay. Ah! Come on. Oh, baby! That is going to be a natural 17 on the die. Okay. Uh, plus, plus, yeah, no, that's that's going to be a hit. That's a hit. Okay. All right. So um, three d six. A bolt of fiery energy lights up uh, the snow. In fact, you can see there's kind of a sizzle of the snow beneath the, the arc of this as it melts, strikes directly into her, uh, blossoms in flame, not hitting uh, Valfino. A perfectly oh, dang it. stricken blow. <laughs> and roll your damage. Can I like sing Val just a little bit? <laughs> oh yeah, you feel the heat. Okay, cool. But Val was already Thanks. feeling the heat. Yeah, I know. Um, in, in his loin. That is actually a really good roll for three die six. That is going to be uh, 15 points of 15. Wow, yeah, you did roll well. well. Yeah, it was a four, five, and a six. All right. Wow. Yes, yes. All right. And now it is her round. Um, as Please, she, let's go, of our friends. She distances uh, further. Uh, she's going to take another 30 feet of action. And then she stops. And you see, she she leans down, and she strikes her hand on the ground. As she does so, you see a column of ice come directly toward Rizia. Ooh. And Rizia, I need you to make a reflex save. Take her out for a date. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> reflex? Uh-huh. That was great, Rory. Thanks, Pat. Drive. 16. <laughs> what are we thanking Pat for? 16. Uh, I love how Becca has transformed from the sweet, innocent rookie to the snarky beast. <laughs> I know. I was just complimenting her today in Discord at her character, uh, her role play growth. Um, little yeah. did I know. Um, all right. So, what was the roll? 16. 16. You are struck. Uh, with a huge column of ice that just seems to fly up from nowhere beneath the ground. And what, do I have environmental resistance <laughs> from growing up in the cold? Uh, uh, not this. <laughs> it's, it's as much concussion damage as anything else. Like, listen. As it slams into you. We're in Canada right now. <laughs> you take 31 points of damage <laughs> as you are rocked with it. And you see, she says, Leave me alone with my plaything. He's quite willing, I'm sure. Val, now is not the time. All right, Valfino, your turn. What are you doing? Val hears this and yells over his shoulder. Or is she still running? Or is she stopped to turn for a moment and cast this spell? Uh, but you, yeah, you feel her start to pivot again to head back to the forest. Val tries to look over over at uh, Rizia and just kind of shouts. 
I knew it wasn't one-sided. <laughs> <laughs> and then looks back at this naked lady and holding him, right? Um, as lovely as this is, I, I, I think I need to be with her. And kind of just like sticks his hand out and kind of points. Like. <laughs> um, when you do this, you feel the grip cinch down tight, almost to the point of crushing bone. And you sense a tone of bitterness and jealousy in the voice. No, no, I'm quite sure you don't. Just a few moments with me and you'll realize the error of your ways. You'll never forget this night. Yeah. And she turns and we go to initiative again. And you won last time, Rizia, so you're up. My Rizzi. Five. I have a three on the die again. You have initiative. So, um, because she stopped to cast the spell, I'll let you close that distance. Roll to hit. Okay, sir, if you don't, I swear to God, let me get these two attacks in. Okay, 18 plus. That's a hit. Okay. Not again, you hear Halcyon say. Please, it's already cold out here. Get someone else. Don't you have that other axe Come you can on, Halcyon. You were just saying that you were tired of being in this damn cave for like 400 uh, years. I, this is the only enemy I would complain of hitting. I assure you. Just uh, put me away for a little while and uh, use that old iron thing you have no, on your back. No, after we're done. <laughs> as, as she says, like, sh she, like, raises the uh, her great axe. All right, roll your attack. second attack. Okay. Can I get a second attack? Well, you automatically get a second attack this time because she stopped to cast a spell. Oh, if you okay. want to use your secondary action, you'll get another... <laughs> ah! Okay. So you got to you gotta roll to confirm this. Now, if you want okay. to, you can use, uh, you know, any of the oh, help. Yeah, I'm okay. going to use. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm going to use... Now remember, on on bonuses, a max of plus five can be applied, or you can use five to use advantage on this confirmation. Your choice. Okay, I'll use five to use advantage. All right, roll. Okay, so the first one is sixteen on the die. Total, no total. Okay, uh, yeah, that's fourteen on the die. That's not well. No, no, no. You have more than plus two. Four. No. What I say? No. Sixteen plus four. What I say? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Okay. What'd you roll on the die? I don't remember. <laughs> what I roll on the die? <laughs> you said you rolled a 12, right? 12 plus 4. Yes, a 16. Where are you getting plus 4? No, because it's my second attack. It's on my first attack. Yeah, but what's your strength? Your strength alone is plus... Oh, I have a, a minus on my strength from no. something. Yeah, you never a cleared... A modifier. You right? never cleared that out. That was from the spider, like three episodes ago. No, 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 no. That wasn't the spider. That was something else. I think it was the uh, knights. Oh. The spectral knights and the... It was the purple worm. No, oh, did she get hit with the sting from the purple worm? Oh, that's okay. Uh, so, yes, clear that out. Right. That Yes, so that's gone now. It's gone now? Yes. Oh. oh. Okay. Well, then that's why. Okay. Plus six, then. So, it's a... Uh, My second attack. 12 plus six, 18. 18. All right. Nope, that's not going to confirm. So, roll your... Okay. Roll your right. advantage die. Come on, advantage I. 11 plus 6, 17. Yeah, so that's lower. All right, so it is not a crit, but it is a hit. Roll damage. Okay. Ooh. That's all right. Somewhere Ooh. Tim Ooh. is disappointed. That's okay. Uh, math is hard. 21 total. All right, another huge chunk uh, is carved out. Um, by uh, Halcyon, even as he grumbles as you do this. Now, remember, if you had wanted to, you could have taken 10 to get a secondary set of attacks, but you can't do that and use for advantage or something else in the same round. So you can still do that next round, because oh, I know you were okay. you were given a ton. Um, all right, with, with this round, um, what is she gonna do? She looks down at Valfino, clearly angry. Val will plead with her, just kind of, not like begging by any means, but just, you know, I know we could have had something special, but, <laughs> but you don't really want someone whose heart belongs to another. You deserve better than this. And like, he starts giving her the, 
<laughs> the it's not you, it's me kind of speech, like. Oh yeah, did you roll your damage on your first uh, attack? No, you, I didn't. Yeah, th I didn't. thank you very much, Sorry, Jerry. Thanks, guys. Um, as as you say this, uh, Val, uh, you hear her voice again, still like feeling acidic uh, with with jealousy. It's not your heart I am interested in, and she pivots and starts to run again into the woods. Uh, that's going to provoke an attack of opportunity from Rizia in addition, uh, because hey. she just turned and ran from the direct engagement of combat. What was your damage on your second attack, Rizia? 23. Uh, wow, golly. You take another chunk. So 21, 42, 57. He only has 403 health left. <laughs> You're kidding. Um, so this is uh, attack of opportunity. Can I use plus five to roll for advantage, or can I use plus 10 to attack twice. Just... Um, yeah, so on an attack of opportunity, it would just be that you, can, you, you can't you can use it for the bonus action. You can just use okay. it for the plus five. Okay, okay, yep. that's fine. Okay, so I'll roll for advantage. All right. Please. Uh, 17 plus 11, 28. You hear again uh, Halcyon's voice in your head. Oh, please. It's She's frigid like, out here. almost done. <laughs> <sighs> that is a hit. Oh, nice! 12 plus 15. 27 points of damage. As you swing again, I mean, you and you just see the gold glimmering in the light. Uh, you cleave right through an arm. It shatters. Uh, Valfino drops to the ground. Uh, dropped as uh, the arm shatters of the creature, and she sprints in to the woods to see Rowan standing there. Um, let's see, what would Rowan do in this situation? What do you guys think? Have a sassy remark and attack. Uh, have a mouthful of alcohol and spit fire onto her. <laughs> I mean, fair, that's Valfino. Like, that's that's Rowan's buddy being carried away. I feel like uh, Strike Rowan would... Went. Yeah. She went too far with my friend. And she drops the mug she was carrying. And... Ooh, the first blow is a hit um, as her sword drives in. Those buns belong only to me. And, oh, a nat one on the second. Oh, wait, no, she only gets one attack anyway. That's right. Um, all right, so the damage. Not quite. Um, He's rolling for Rowan, so he wouldn't yeah. use his plus one. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, the DM would not use his bonuses uh, he could. against. He could. He could. He could. He could. Uh, <laughs> just saying. As as Rowan uh, manages a strafing blow, uh, you see the creature sprints to the edge of that cliffside, and then just leaps over, vanishing. Don't do it. You're so young. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving you all in the stillness. Of the forest. This <laughs> is so wild. <laughs> it's been like what, 18 seconds? Yeah, yeah, it's been like 20, 25 <laughs> seconds. Just yeah. like. <laughs> Rizia is like literally just contemplating life and the fact that she chose her friends over the gold right now. She's yep. just like, yep. did I make the right choice? I'm nope. not sure right now. Like she nope. just has like a headache. You most assuredly made the right choice. I'm not sure I did. And um, please, now, Ooh, those right. frigid wenches are the most unpleasant things to call from you can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. I know. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'd rather be plunged into a red dragon. Frankly, it's much more pleasant. Oh. Have you seen any of those about? No. Can't say I have. Uh, <sighs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so she's been back in. You can go back for a nap now. <laughs> uh, and just so um, our um, uh, Pat and Robert and uh, Tracy Renreb, um, for all the bits that were given, those will carry over uh, to next week's game. Um, so just because they were given there and at a combat that was sort of at a late point in the stream, anytime that happens, we carry those over to the next stream. So thank you to all of you. Um, so because we're getting close on time here, um, you managed to wend your way just two more miles with Rasmus dragging, you know, step by step, slowly um, through the snow. 
gasping, laboring with every breath until up ahead, uh, you can see on the path, still uh, the cliffside off to one edge, but you see a stone structure, two, uh, two towers, uh, one on either side, a massive curtain wall and gate ahead up in the fog. Um, as you approach, you can see there are guards, uh, their armor glinting now in the mid-morning sun uh, that stand uh, to atop, uh, but you don't see any guards standing outside the gate on the ground. Grazia, we are looking for the last chance if this is the town. I think it is. I hope. Are you sure you don't need help? I'm sure. Let's move forward. Okay. And we'll move forward. Uh, as you step forward, um, the stone, clearly the stone made by men, uh, not nearly as ancient as the stone in the temple, but still, this has been here for some time. You see a well-traveled uh, stone road here, um, which has a larger, um, a larger road that intersects where uh, wagons and whatnot could have come as opposed to the narrow path that you traveled, which was the more direct route up into the deepest part of the Rakers. As you look around, it is literally with awe that you realize you must be at the very peak of the world. Um, you know, you sit above the clouds in many places, a, a dense, uh, you could call it fog, but it is literally clouds that sort of travel gently over this mountainside. You see huge sickles of ice that hang from the ancient stone of this tower. The iron gate uh, stands looking cold and brittle, and a pair of armored men stand, uh, you can see visibly shivering in their, uh, ar in their metal armor, clutching uh, long, heavy torches next to them for some meager manner of warmth. And the stone wall stands dauntingly above you. You there! State your business! We seek the tavern and shelter. All who come this way do. What brings you here? Warmth? And you came here just for warmth? No? Why are you here? And he, you see he motions around to like he's speaking of the tops of these mountains, not this stone structure. I forget it what... Is best. Sorry, go ahead. It is best, Rizia, that we just be... Uh, and I'll give you a wink forthcoming with uh, our endeavors. I forget the name of where we're supposed to be going. <laughs> we are in search of a lost item that we were told is in this area. We could explain more, but right now our friends are in great uh, uh, need of warmth and, and uh, healing at the moment. We will very willingly explain to whoever we need, but please, please, they are not in good condition. And I am quite small myself. Rasmus is going to collapse. <gasps> then Rizia will carry him. As Rasmus collapses and Rizia picks him up, um, you hear the <laughs> as the gates open up and the citadel of Last Chance uh, sitting high Ooh. up in the Raker Mountains opens up uh, before you. The wind cold, bitter, but not yanking uh, you toward the, toward the cliffside the way it did uh, outside the temple. Here, just a constant reminder that nature is no friend in this area. As your beleaguered party heads toward the gate, uh, Rasmus, at the edge of consciousness, what are the final things you say to Rizia as she carries you before you pass out? Rasmus will look up at the sky 
and you'll see his gaunt expression, his eyes blurry, and he'll just smile. Mila would have loved this. It is so beautiful. As a tear rolls from his cheek and freezes onto his temple. And then he just passes out. And when he says Mila, he says it with maybe the first hint of sincerity you've seen from him. A lot of him, he's been sincere with you. He's been honest. He's been upright. But this is the softest moment you've seen Rasmus. He's weak. He's feeble. And this smile he lets go is one of more warmth and light than of the darkness you've seen expelled from. As that happens, you feel Rizia just hold you a little bit tighter and closer to her body to try to use her body warmth to help keep you warm. Just hang in there. We're almost there. As you do this, you see his head fall over and that small crystalline tear drops and almost as a punctuation to his weariness shatters on the stone below. Anaho, Valfino, anything you would like to say or do before we close tonight? Just when passing through the gate, uh, comment to the guards, Whoever needs to speak to us, we will be, we will make ourselves known. And if there is any way that we may repay this to the two of you for your generosity in taking us in, please let us know. Okay, you sort of speak this to the guards that are standing atop the towers. Um, even as you pass beneath the giant portcullis, uh, you see it you know, looms above you, the, the, the uh, columns of iron are this thick around. And again, everything just bespeaks of uh, being made strong enough to withstand incredible element and cold, and yet still being worn away by time. Uh, Valfino, anything else for you? Val stays silent. He just kind of takes everything in. Um... He realized he kind of messed up earlier, so he's just, you know, keeping his head down and, you know, trying not to cause more issues. <laughs> so he chagrined Valfino as the party enters beneath the, beneath the gates of The Last Chance. And with that, we will end tonight's Blue Box Greyhawk Awakening Book 2. And bravo to my players. Fantastic, fantastic job tonight. Uh, so I don't know. I, I think I've mentioned this to you guys before. Um, but as a DM, uh, everyone has a different style for keeping track of things. Uh, I, I only do XP uh, by... Uh, by uh, I only do leveling up by XP. I don't use milestone level ups. And the reason I don't do that is I think it really, it, it sort of short circuits the value of accounting for role play and different choices that the players make. Uh, and it will then result in sort of people being at different levels, but that's okay. And I think that is a, a sort of a more egalitarian way of, of playing the game. And I think, oh, by the way, my Greyhawk crew would have to agree I have been much better about XP for the past couple, three months. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> uh, and that will, that will continue. And I'll tell you, it, it, it's, it has been the incredible help of my mods that has helped so much with that. Uh, thank you to Manda. Thank you to not, tonight to Josh uh, Iculus. Uh, by the way, so, type exclamation point T O G. Exploit T O G in the chat. Uh, that's for the uh, the treasures of Greyhawk. This 98 page glorious reprint book that can take characters from level four to level level 18. Uh, it's included the maps and all of the imagery. It is uh, it is a fantastic piece to your collection. Uh, reprint by Lightning Source, courtesy of Canadian ancient gamer Patrick who does so much for Jay and I in terms of providing us content for the streams. Um, you know but, why that is? Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but so one of the things I do, uh, I've mentioned this before, where I was going to the XP point, is 
I can't possibly remember everything. And I do look at Manda's notes, but I don't really go back and rewatch the streams. I'll go back and rewatch bits of them uh, just to see the AV quality or maybe to look at a certain moment. But I keep little tick marks on my piece of paper here that uh, anytime I think there's like a, a fantastic role play moment and I'll like I'll have tick marks by each of the characters names. Uh, these tick marks are growing longer and longer with each session. This this crew has turned in some fantastic role play uh, the last several weeks. And I want to say thank you to you players. Thank you to you mad chatters for all the mad chattery. Let's quickly do our stream MVP. We'll roll for our giveaway and we'll get Vivi on her way to a 12 hour work shift tonight. Uh, so for all of you that gave the bits, I think we got 3,200 bits for Rizia in like 30 seconds. That might be a record for one player in 30 seconds. Uh, just know, in addition to helping the combat and what's to come, uh, it, it warmed the heart of a very tired orc uh, tonight. And uh, let's go to uh, why each of you should be stream MVP. And we're going to start with uh, you, Valfino. Tell us why you should be stream MVP. Well, let's first look at Val's like suave, like just he turned on the charm tonight. Okay? He did. Like first he was smitten with Rizia, the love of his life, <laughs> and then he sees this saucy uh, lady who's uh, purge on, very voluptuous and very, very nice. <laughs> you made it. I like that even better. That's so, I, I said voluptuous. Voluptuous is like another yeah, level. I kept hearing voluptuous. <laughs> and I need to check myself. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So there's that. And so he turned on his charm. He uh, kind of swapped it up a little bit from being star eyed and doughy and just kind of a goofball to like, hey, baby, how you doing? Like, <laughs> Full 360, he was there for it, and then, like, the entire time he was, like, swooped away and kidnapped, he, he kept his cool. He, then he realized, nah, nah, my one true love, Rizia, you gotta let me go. Like, thank you, but no, no thank you. I made a mistake here. Valfino, I forgot thank to show you, but this, this is what you passed up, Valfino, just so you know. To give it the two-second twitch delay. I forgot to show this. Ooh. This this is what you passed up, my friend, just so you know. Yeah, you made the wrong choice. <laughs> wrong choice. Wrong choice. Nice lady over Orc all day long. <laughs> oh. uh, Ma Mary yeah. Berry White. Uh, all right, so fantastic job tonight, Valfino. Um, and yeah, the, the, as the chat said it, I mentioned it to you in Discord uh, earlier today when I sent out the XP to watch the growth that you have had in just a few weeks as a role player, it's absolutely stunning. And you are mm -hmm. doing a fantastic job. So tonight, uh, you will be rolling for, and there's still time to put your uh, exclamation point T-O-G in the chat. Uh, Pat draws! Oh! Unfortunately, he never wins, so. never wins! All right, so Pat, you are in the drawing for this uh, Treasures of Greyhawk. Uh, now let's go to Anaho. Why should Anaho be stream MVP? Oh, Anaho should be stream MVP because he shot a very useful dart yeah. bolt, very, very useful bolt at a nice lady uh, that I know, I know in my heart of hearts, I had two natural 20s on. <laughs> That's true, you did. But, you know, we know how That's that turned out. Um, you know, uh, the in while well, we we're still in the temple area with how... Uh, just the description of how Anaho was, uh, you know, when Rizia looked at him, uh, the kind of the commentary, the back and forth, the remembrance of those comments uh, from last week's session. Uh, also, it's just, you know what? Rizia said, this is what you picked. That's good enough. Let's go. Uh, just kind of taking that face value with what she says. Uh, the role play at the edge of the cave, like, uh, give me a rope because <laughs> I've, I've, I've got this. No, <laughs> yep. I'm not doing this again. Uh, and then laughing when it was Rasmus going off, not him. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the bolt thing that I led with. Yeah. And, and trying to be like, yeah, Rasmus, let's, let's stick by a tree. Let's, uh, let's not go too far. Yeah, and, 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 and Anaho's, uh, not only his role play has been good, the combat, I loved, like I mentioned this was last week, but, you know, leaping into the purple worm with your ring of the ram, just overall, uh, the role play has been fantastic, and um, hopefully you'll get to rest very soon, because there's some leveling up to be done. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, Rory, you will be rolling for, you guys are going to like Last Chance, by the way, I'm confident of it. Um, 
The Nocturnal Scribe. Ooh. A bur- no, a year, or one year follower I met. A one year follower joined us uh, in November of last year. Nocturnal Scribe, are you still with us in the chat? I saw Pat Draws is in there. And we'll give that just a moment. And then while we're waiting for Nocturnal Scribe to respond, Rizia, tell us why you should be stream MVP. Uh, Rizia should be stream MVP. Uh, this, episode, <laughs> this episode, this uh, episode, Rizia had to face a lot of uh, choices and make a lot of choices. Um, I think in the uh, crypt or whatever tomb thing area we were in, um, Rizia was facing a huge choice of something mm-hmm. that she's been seeking for her entire life or picking uh, people who have risked their lives for her. And in particular, um, I just want to note the reason why she didn't say anything about Rowan and Val is because those two are just newer to her. Sure. Uh, Naho has been there from day one and Rasmus also has been there and she has seen a lot of sacrifices that the two of them have made um, mm-hmm. along her journey for her and building relationships uh, together with them, like very, very strong relationships, obviously. Um, Making that choice, I think it was very, very difficult for her. Um, She really didn't know what she wanted. And as soon as you said that they were frozen and she had a chance to kind of really sit there and think, um, I think that's kind of what led to the decision that she had made um, overall. I think if had they had not been frozen like that, I think she would have she would have maybe made a different choice. But mm-hmm. the fact that she could see all of her friends just on the other side, and then adding to what uh, Anaho had just said to her just prior to her entering, uh, really hit home for her. Um, so it was a tough decision. Uh, she was really not happy, and she was really um, she you'll you'll see her suffer um, a lot of doubt um, over the decision she has made, but, you know, she'll kind of t- play tug of war with that a little bit. Um, and being the only one to help Val, <laughs> well, Raz was like, yeah, no thanks. And then, <laughs> and then, and then Anao didn't really help either. So, you know, Rizia taking on uh, the big ice lady to save her man from... <laughs> Yeah, and, and being very effective. And I really enjoyed your, your role play with Halcyon, uh, the back oh, and yes. forth. And her, yeah, her RP was a Halcyon. So <laughs> it's going to be a really, again, gaining a new sidekick, I guess. Be, uh, <laughs> a very interesting relationship that she has. Again, almost like, it's that almost resent, the kind of like a resentment, almost a little bit, like a tinge of it, because she did make a choice to choose him sure. over over like the axe over the gold and the gold had completely disappeared and then him being like a sassy old man like it's kind of just like <laughs> rubbing salt <laughs> especially in times like this where you know what i mean she's like my friends aren't really helping me right now Why did I so that's, that's, fine. that's funny well done all right so you will be rolling for Rory! Uh, that's nice. Now, Rory, we have to come back to you. The Nocturnal Scribe is not in the chat, so we'll re-roll yours. Ooh. You will be rolling for Canadian Hell! Yay! Canadian Hell! <laughs> Please tell Does me that exist? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, called, it's called Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian Hell, are you still with us? You gotta let us know in the chat. They're actually my friends. Let me see. Yeah, it looks like you're in there. Let us know. Just respond in the chat. Canadian Hell, let us know you're still here. Come on. And while... Yay! All right. Last but not least, why should Rasmus be stream MVP? Rasmus should be stream MVP for... I've had this whole time to think, and I've been trying to think. Um, <laughs> falling. For falling. Twice. For falling twice and being able to give Rowan a uh, time to serve and help others. For seeing um, the scribing on the axe. seeing the scribing on the axe. Scouting the uh, architecture. Sick, uh, for figuring out the architecture mm-hmm. and for being anemic. Um... And just so tired, so very tired, and so very sick, which I'm going to message you about, John, in a bit. Yeah. And you use the staff. Okay, but you're also to use the goblin staff. Yeah, and you, yeah, and you hit with the with staff. staff. All right, you're so. Playing your character very true to yourself, because even though you're tired, you could have easily just been like, oh, I'm going to go fight, even though. Exactly. You're but you stayed true to your character. You, you, you killed that. Stay true to your character, guys. You did. You she, did. I'm going to slap you. you. <laughs> Toxic boy summer. <laughs> All right, so in the, uh, you, in, the, uh, in the chat, you'll see the stream MVP vote. If you look to the upper right hand corner, Mad Chatters, you'll see a little drop down arrow, and you see the four names 
the players. Your votes mean something to them. They get 1,000 extra experience points, plus they get the joy of knowing that you actually care about them. And so you, Josh, That's will be stupid. rolling for, <laughs> oh my gosh, Natasha. Natasha. Are you got to be kidding me. Merch to ice. What are you doing? Like, there are, like, I, I'm looking at, there are so many names in this giveaway. The bot just m is magnetic. Did you know that Natasha's actually a hacker. Uh, I, I, you know what? May, <laughs> wait, maybe Natasha owns the Nightbot site. That must be what it is. Natasha. Yes. All right. So let's quickly go around. Let's make your rolls. Uh, let's start with you, Valfino. You have Pat draws. Come on, Valfino. There's still time. It's a 19. A 19. Oh, that's looking roll good, Pat. Once. Roll again. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, roll again. If you get a nat 20, come on. A one. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, we'll take the 19. Take the All right, let's go to you, Rory. Who are you rolling for? <laughs> uh, I'm rolling for Canadian hell. All right. Buddy. So we got a Canadian and an Icelander. It's, uh, two 19. Icelanders. A 19? You rolled a 19? 19. Oh, and, and is there one or two? Two, you rolled two. Oh, oh, come on, come on. All right, so we already have a showdown at least between Pat and Canadian Hell. You wasted your two earlier. 19 is good, 19 is good. All right, still time in the chat for stream MVP. Uh, it's actually closer than I thought. Uh, Rizia and Valfino getting very close now. Uh, let's go to you, uh, Vivi. Okay, uh, I forgot who it was rolling for. I was, oh no, I rolled for Rory. <laughs> yeah, you've got Rory. I forgot who it was rolling for. Ready? Get Rory, 19. Yes, you are. Six. Okay. <laughs> 16. Ooh, all right, close, but not quite. All right, let's go to you, Josh. You've got Natasha. Natasha, here we go. Here we go, Josh go. Tasha. First roll. Natasha. Josh. 20. 16. All right. And second roll is a 17. Oh my goodness, so close. All right, so the roll off between the two of you, please. Pat draws and Canadian hell. Better husband Just or wife. Still time to vote. Get that vote in for the stream MVP. More to the stream. Single roll. Single roll? Single roll. No, you guys are married, not a single roll. Yeah, one <laughs> single roll. He already rolled, go ahead and roll. Open the gates. What'd you get? I got a 17. Yeah. Let's go, Pat draws finally wins! Congratulations, Pat. He never wins. I know he never wins. I mean, Pat draws, yeah. All right, and stream MVP is Rizia! Let's go, Rizia. <laughs> all right, everyone, uh, as we close off the night tonight, we want to say thank you from Blue Box. Thank you for all the follows. Thank you for all the subs. We're going to get ready to give a raid tonight. Any final uh, comments from our players toward our mad chatters? Uh, uh, Natasha, I love you. Thank you for being okay with me uh, still rolling for you. <laughs> love you guys. Thanks. Love you, Natasha. See you guys. You guys the are the best. Uh, we do We do just so love you Mad Chatters. Uh, the Blue Box community is made by its viewers and uh, the supporters. If you're not in our Discord, you should be. If you're watching tonight and you haven't followed, please give us a follow. Thank you for all the gift subs tonight. Thank you for all the support. Join us tomorrow night. Uh, we'll be talking about your favorite magic items, and you can pop that in our Discord chat as well. And tonight, um, as we get ready to leave, don't forget we have our Fall of Red Dawn stream on Sunday. Yeah. And I know Rory's excited about that. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. But as we conclude, rating Guild Superior, Blue Box, signing out. Love you guys.